Hello and welcome to Blood on the Tamases, a Vampire the Masquerade chronicle set in Oxfordshire, England, 2001. With me tonight, uh, Philip playing uh, Silas Shaw of Clan Bruya. Bex playing Velvet of Clan Ventry. And I'm playing Joanne Salt of Clan Toriadon. And Carlos playing Theodore Penn of Clan Ventry. So we are about to start uh, Season 1, Episode 5. But before we do, let's have a quick recap of what happened last week. So the country were all ready, some more than others, to take their tests of metal when we jumped back in time to see where Silas was, just being slightly behind the rest of us, meeting his extended family. Uh, he was also given a special task from Sir James to unmake a mortal that would be otherwise be a provocation to Silas. Uh, Sir James being the uh, great grandsire and one of the founders of of the uh, I'm sure. Uh, um, <coughs> Silas arriving slightly late to uh, to to the court after that, saw so the rest of his coterie lined up to take the test of metal and immediately jumped in. Uh, Velvet passed spectacularly with Joan and Silas passing with the beasts and seals. Uh, Theo unfortunately failed, although Sir Francis' actions caused some uproar in court after being literally rocketed <laughs> over <laughs> Across there. the rooms. Yeah, that's gonna hurt. Uh, and after some general deals in court and Joanne being approached to give Barnby a letter, Sally challenged Rupert to a duel. The coaches were accepted as, a, as petitions and given their tasks. And that is where we left off. Okay, so... Before we get into the session, there's a couple of things we've got to handle. So, as was pointed out in the recap, uh, we had Theodore fail his test of metal. And that unfortunately means he has brought shame upon his blood, which in this <laughs> chronicle means he has got a stain. Uh, and both Joanne and Silas, although they passed, they did so by fueling the power of the beast to do so. And that meant they had um, served the beast in front of court. So that meant they had also got stains. Now we neglected to do our checks to see if their humanity would go down or stay the same and, and whether they would feel remorse or not. So apologies for those of you who've been waiting for this to happen. We're going to resolve it now. So for those of you who've not done these checks before, essentially you look at your current humanity level you look at how many stains you've got and the stain is almost like a, a damage strike at the at the right hand side and whatever unchecked boxes there are left equal dice you get to roll if you get any successes you feel remorse for your shameful actions and your humanity stays that it is get us a bell we're gonna need shame if you um our theodore <laughs> point of yeah if you mind. fail then you do not feel remorse you justify those actions in your own mind but your humanity then goes down. So let's let's have some rolls, shall we? Pass. First one. Oh, oh, that was a close one. I passed. So yes! you passed. You passed. You failed. Okay. Oh. So perhaps unsurprisingly, Joanne does not feel like she's done anything wrong. She doesn't feel any shame. She was punched, and she and she. <laughs> Gave back with aggression, and that was entirely warranted in the situation. However, Theodore feels terrible shame. He should. For the fact that he failed his test. <laughs> I have been feeling shame before the dice. Fall. Yes, but now you have mechanical support. Yes. <laughs> for your role playing. Mechanical and assisted shame. <laughs> that is a the new best one. kind of shame. But, but it's, yeah, yeah, doubling down on the shame. Uh, and Silas, of course, you also feel shame for you have. Re revealed your bestial nature in court in front of your noble bloodline. So, uh, that's the remorse rolls covered. Something to say as well uh, is that, that we've been playing, but hasn't been made clear, is that because the players have been playing fledglings, at the very first session they did not have access to all of their starter disciplines. And they've been gradually having those other disciplines feed in as the session has progressed. So, but in this session, session five, you now have access to all of your starter discipline dots. Some of you watching along may note that some of them, you'll have seen the emergence of certain disciplines in play. But yeah, they've now got them all. So if you've been watching along thinking, why aren't they using their disciplines more? <laughs> it's because they didn't have them, uh, but now they do. Because the ST took our toys away. Yeah, the <laughs> horrible, mean ST. But now we have our toys. Now, one other thing to mention before we get going is that 
Uh, in this session, we are going to be using the project rules from the core book from the appendix. Uh, so if any of you have got your books at home, obviously feel free to look at them. We will talk about them a bit as the, the projects come up. Um, this also means that this session is going to be quite fun because we're into the Wild West of the players deciding some of the actions they're going to be taking and seeing what impacts they have on the Chronicle. So, um, it is uh, currently Sunday the 28th of October 2001 and we finished the session with the Coterie in conversation as to what they were going to do to prove themselves to the kindred of Oxfordshire in order to get entry and be recognised as true citizens. So at the moment you are petitioners, you've asked, you've sworn to the prince that you will abide by the oath, and now you're trying to show you're worthy of becoming members of Oxfordshire. However, because we were running out of time in session four, there are a couple of events we sort of skipped over quickly that we're going to come back to, and a couple of key questions I need to ask you about this time for certain players. So first off, I want to come to Velvet. Now, Velvet, you had taken a certain amount of aggravated damage yes. and a cracked rib and other business. Yep. And you were consuming blood by feeding on your family, because you're such a great guy, <laughs> um, to top, top, guy. top guy in order to um, heal this damage to yourself. Yes. However, you currently have an aggravated um, point of damage remaining. Yes. And because, of course, you often take certain family members into a more intimate environment in order to feed upon them. No, no comment. I don't want them to die. Uh, <laughs> my question to you is, what measures does Velvet take around the fact that he has an obvious injury, which is very unusual for his line of work? It's mainly lying. Excellent. <laughs> mainly lying, I mean, about it. I don't think he can... That's you fine. Can disguise that this has happened what to lie does Velvet tell? That's a good question. Um, I think that uh, he will say that he was having giving. He was in some sort of tour of a facility, and something fell on him. Okay. Um, so Jessica will buy this lie because your pool is strong enough that uh, that she will believe you this time. Poor woman. Um, yeah. <laughs> So before you go, before Velvet goes to meet the Coterie, a few nights passed after court. So this is, we're kind of winding time back a little bit. There was something Velvet was very keen to do. Yes. Which I'd like to play through now. Okay. So essentially, a night or two after court where you have healed the worst of your injuries, enough that you can go out in public without drawing attention to yourself. Yes. As long as you're covering the injuries with clothing. Yep. Uh, Velvet goes to see a production of, or goes to the new theatre in Oxford, <laughs> To see the Lion King. Yes. So. On his own. On his own. <laughs> without any children or anything. Without, he goes to see the Lion <laughs> King <laughs> without <laughs> taking his children because that's the kind of dad he is. Not suspicious, just pathetic. And he finds himself in the ticket office, yes. one assumes. Yes, yeah. And when you arrive at the ticket office, the person who is sitting there will say, um, uh, excuse me, uh, are you Mr. Riley by any chance? Yeah, that's me. Ah, excellent. One moment. And they leaf through some envelopes and then they will push an envelope over the counter to you. Okay, and take the envelope. Okay. And open it. Inside the envelope is a ticket for one of the private boxes. Okay, I go there. So you go up um, inside. The, the, the thing that will strike you when you go into the theatre itself is everything is very plush and very red. All the seats, the decorations, the curtains, it's quite a striking ideal for obviously shedding blood <laughs> should you need to. Uh, it will not be a massive surprise to Velvet to find there is already someone else occupying the box, um, and that is Adam. Okay. Um, so there are, two, there are two seats here only, or there are more than two seats? There are more seats, but they are not occupied. Okay. There are four seats in this box, but there are only two. Only one is obviously occupied, sorry. So he's sitting say. in the front row or the back row? Uh, he, there is only one row. Oh, okay, fine. And he is in that row. Okay, fine. In which case, you sit next to him. Oh. So you sit down next to him. From your position, obviously most of the people down below in the auditorium won't be able to see you. Yep. People in other boxes could see you, potentially. 
if if they were you know of a change. mind to be staring across it's not well lit but they could potentially see you okay. however they would only be able to see you from the kind of chest upwards because of the way the box is designed when okay. you're sitting down and the the barriers and everything <coughs> okay um and he is uh, he, when you sit down he will glance at you and um gives you a slightly shy smile Uh, I'll give you this idea. Uh, well, I I thought I thought it's a place that people are unlikely to look for us. I guess you're right about that. Uh, oh, sorry. One question before we press on. I'm uh, assuming that Velvet is using Blush of Life. Yes. Yes. Can you please make a rouse check for me? I should say that Adam is breathing. Success. The blood eagerly <laughs> flows around your body. Okay. Uh, yeah, what was I? Uh, I that's right. Um, so I will say, I swear to God, I'm waiting for you. I, I waited there the whole time you were gone, and I, I was there when you called me, and <clears throat> and uh, you know what you said you were coming coming back, and uh, it was good news, and and I I thought I would order up the eighty nine crew again we could celebrate when you got back, but and then when the door opened, then it wasn't wasn't you, it was Wallace, and then I'm I'm so sorry, I. For whatever it's worth, I meant everything I said to you. I meant to be there. I wanted to be there. I... I wanted it to be us together. Without anyone else in the way. I had permission. I did everything, but he... But Wallace... Wallace is Wallace, right? He, he found out somehow, and he... He intervened. He went over my head, and I was, I, I couldn't get, I wasn't allowed. I couldn't come to you. I wanted to. They didn't let me. They can, you know what they're like. I know, I know. I, I wanted to, I wanted to, I promise you. I just, but I, I couldn't. I believe you. I believe you. Well, why couldn't I find you then? After, <clears throat> after he took me, and then he murdered me. And then, uh, two days later, I was back in my house, and I called you, and then I looked for you, and then I even hired somebody else to look for you, and I couldn't find you. And you know what? It's not even the worst thing. You know what? Being dragged away from the guy you love and murdered in cold blood, it's not even the worst thing. The worst thing is being dragged away from the guy you love and being murdered in cold blood, and then being told in the world that you end up in, that you are somehow obliged to your murderer for the rest of fucking eternity. You couldn't find me because I was told to not be findable. He didn't want us having contact. He still doesn't. If they find out, if they see us... Look, I... But you had the permission, right? So that means we can have a duo. No, I, ha I had the permission. Right, but that means he didn't follow it. It wasn't you that got... No, no, I had the permission to do it, but then it got changed. Wallace went over my head. I don't know how he found out, but he found out, and he got permission, and he acted. He's... He glances around, although there doesn't seem to be anyone watching you. He... He's, he's in a much stronger position than I am. He's much older than I am. So there's no way to undo this. I don't mean in terms of permission. I mean in terms of blood. You can't just take his blood out of me and give me yours. No. Why? It, it just that's where the line is it does no it does it doesn't work that way i can't i can't I, it wouldn't change anything uh, 
So what, what do we, what do we do then from here? You meant what you said, and I meant what I said. I, I just, I don't. I don't I'm not I, giving this up. I, 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 I'm not giving it up either. I had to, I had to wait until court where it wouldn't be. I wasn't even sure I'd do it then. They, were, they felt like they were watching me all the time. He hates me, you know. I can believe it. Uh, Don't worry. We have to be careful. Look, when when you're part of Oxfordshire, it won't be the same. You'll have freedom then. So which? But right now, if he doesn't, if he thinks he can, he can destroy you, and there is nothing anyone can do. You're not under the prince's protection. I am not under his protection. At least not any kind of it that matters. What, what I mean is, is that your life is in his hands. And if he finds, and he has ways, he has ways to hurt me too. We have to be careful. If he doesn't know, he thinks, he thinks I wouldn't dare meet you. As long as he thinks that, we can meet. Do he hurt you? No, no, but he can. There are lots of ways he can, he can. Don't All right. I... Well, then you should know. We should have some other way of meeting, something that he isn't going to know about. But it needs to be more subtle than this, because he's often in here. If if you've got ideas, I'll listen. <clears throat> I need your number or some other way to contact you. Yes. All right. And I will think on it. Yes. What? Are you in? Are you in this family? Yes, sort of. Sort of. What do you mean? I mean, he looks around again, lowers his voice, says. My sire was adopted by Rafe. So he wasn't at the meeting that I went to. Was there somebody else? What's his name? Her name. Her name. She wasn't, she wasn't, she's not considered the blood. She's, you, you don't know what they're like if you're not I know alive. exactly what they're like. We share a clan, all right? We share a clan, but we don't share blood. Not a bloodline, not in that way. All right. But she's treated, she and I have a certain special status, but that doesn't mean the others like it, but it's, it's no, race decree. That. All right. All right, well, just don't put yourself in danger. We are already in danger. Well. But I, there's only so long. I, when you came in the court and I saw you, I, I couldn't wait any longer. I know. This isn't a very good idea, but. I've known a lot of things in my life that weren't a very good idea. And I weren't above that. I've been pretending to be someone I'm not all my damn life. So that's pretty easy. I, I know what that's like. Well, I have this, so I'll think on it, and I'll let you know. All right, I'll be waiting. So the Lion King, giant giraffes and things yeah. move past you, <laughs> like down the auditorium and things, as you're having this conversation. Um, but okay, under, the, under the cover of the booth, he will hold your hand through the performance. Okay, I will do the same. And then I don't want to leave at the end of this at all. Do you, do you leave him at the end of the performance? Or no. do you do something stupid and no, impulsive? No, I'd probably do something stupidly impulsive by that point. That's a lot of hours to be thinking about what stupid impulsive things I can do. All right, so what, <coughs> what stupid impulsive thing is Velvet going to do? Well, I already the hired a hotel room. So you're going to take Adam back to the hotel? Yep. Okay. I mean, if he refuses to go, I'm not going to make him, obviously. <laughs> That's no. my line, just so you know. Feeding on he... my wife, no problem. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> so wholesome. So um, you. Number one, Dad. <laughs> Firmly blocking thoughts of your wife and family, you take Adam <laughs> back to the hotel room that you booked. Um, he doesn't resist. He doesn't argue. Oh, good. He just goes qu- like that kind of weird, unspoken tension building between you as you make your way to the hotel. Okay. Um, you go to the room. Yep. And as soon as the door is shut, um, you begin. Yep. Now, <laughs> the thing that's worth mentioning is, of course, I've got a bus trip. <laughs> you do have a busted rib yeah. which he will notice and it kind of changes the tempo slightly but it, you know it becomes yeah. a little bit because it's quite impulsive yeah. it's like, yeah, those, yeah, yeah. like those action films where there's the excitement it's like oh ow my scar <laughs> you know yeah. there is that that moment of um of kind of oh actually no you're in pain and, and and then it becomes more tender but still also a sort of a, a desperation yeah. in the two of you um However, as you start to move forward in the act, you are going to have to make a roll, Velvet. Because at your current level of humanity, you have to fake sexual intercourse. <laughs> so you're going to have to make a composure plus stamina roll oh to see if you can convincingly go through the motions. Now, from Velvet's point of view, what it's actually surprising because you're often used to going through the motions because you feel like you don't really care but yes. you do care you want this yeah. you want this and yet your body is not quite responding in the way you expect it to however go ahead and make your roll we'll see what happens oh shit I got one success I probably need to spend willpower on this I mean you can, yeah, you can. yes I there will there was this horrible moment where he is obviously very into you and he is kissing you <laughs> and he is <laughs> He is, be all all it's power. very, it's very, yeah, yes, I am spending it's, the getting it's getting quite, it's getting quite raunchy. Oh, I should add, by the way, uh, super, uh, willpower recovers from last session. Yes, yeah, so you recover. Uh, okay. If you've spent any willpower, okay. if it's superficial willpower, you recover the highest of your resolve or composure. Okay. Oh, that's better. That's a lot better. Three successes. Three successes. Okay. You you have this horrible moment where you think I'm not I'm not feeling this. This has never happened to me before. This, this is, literally has this, never happened. This, to me this is not how I imagine this moment, and he has not noticed. He is lost oh in this kind of excitement, and you know your clothes are all over the hotel floor. It's very exciting and raunchy, and yet there's a bit of you that's just sort of detached, going yeah. There is, however, some excitement building. You can feel your fangs <laughs> starting to protrude because, of course, in your mind, sex always leads yep. to one thing. And as you begin to go through the motions and you do have sex with him, and he seems to have a great time. He's My very... God. <laughs> he's, it's always the quiet ones. Yeah. You know. Um, Velvet is very much... You're, you're putting on a good show, but increasingly there's that bit of you that's like, now would be the point where you would... You don't have to. You're not com- compelled, but you are aware your fangs are coming out. Okay. And a bit of you would quite like... Is aware of the, the, the veins in his neck throbbing. I almost said something inappropriate then, but yes. Yeah. Um, what... what, uh, what was, is, is Velvet going to nip at him in any way? Oh, God. Oh God this is quite a hard decision to make. Um... Okay, um, so, so like there's a there's a thing of um uh, of kind of doing this do, doing this part way. So I don't want to feed on him, but I do want to bite him. Okay, so you <laughs> yeah. you begin to bite at him. Yep. And nip at him. Do we have any marshmallows? And thing, after you know, a while, like a... he will also begin to do the same. Oh, right. He oh, will my not. Floor. <laughs> which, which one? <laughs> the one that relates to this. Yeah. Oh well, it tastes good. I mean, yeah. So you are you biting enough to draw blood? Because what's begun as just sort of sexual play has become like you're kind of nipping in a sort of are we or aren't we going to kind of? No, I don't think so. Okay. I'm just debating. It's yeah, yeah, it's dangerous territory. <laughs> All right. That's yeah. That's, so no, I won't actually bite him to feed him. him. So there is a point. There is a point where, you know, you'll feel his teeth on you. Right. 
bite her. And you also are biting at him, but like just kind of nipping at the yeah. skin rather than the kind of biting deep. And there's a bit of you that wants to draw from his blood. And you think maybe there's a bit of him that wants to drink from you, but both of you kind of walk the tightrope of like the, the excitement of it. And this is exciting in a way that having sex for Velvet wasn't. Okay. The, the possibility of tasting this blood and you think it would taste good. That is the feeling that you have. You, you are excited by this, but you kind of, you feel like maybe, maybe this isn't the time. Maybe it's the second date, you know. Maybe second date. Yeah. <laughs> second <laughs> second yeah. date is the blood drink. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and so, um, we, we okay, draw, we, 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 we draw a curtain yes. over, over the scene the best. at that point. <laughs> so uh, hopefully you're not too broken, Lane, because we need to come to Joanne uh, to look at when you get back after court. Oh, uh, I have a question for you, actually, which is um, Joanne, of course, also has injuries that are significant. What you current? What, what are you currently on health-wise? Four aggravated. So you are on four Jesus. aggravated damage, which means that if anybody sees you walking around where you're not very well covered up, and also probably not walking. You know, if you're just sat in a chair, well covered up, you might pass as a normal human. But if you were moving about, there is a good chance people will notice that you are so heavily injured you should be unconscious in hospital. Unfortunately for you, you work in a hospital full of medical professionals. So how is Joanne going to deal with this issue? What is her strategy? She shouldn't have a problem. She's not a pregnancy. Right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Obviously, as far as Finn is concerned, this isn't even a problem. But for Joanne, what is the what is the thing that she's going to do? I've got a family emergency. I'm taking time off work. All right. I would like you to make a manipulation, um, and let's say subterfuge. You can add your influence dice to this pool. You can also rouse for the pool, obviously, whenever if you want to. I don't have... I think I've got Fame Medical Staff. Fame will do. You can throw Fame at this. Do you know who I am? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's more of a... Sorry. I've been working here for so long and I've never taken a day off. How? It, why are you questioning this now? Sort okay. of thing. <laughs> Look at my face! <laughs> okay. <laughs> Willpower as well. Excellent. That's what I like to see. Yeah, I know. Four successes. Four successes. You are very convincing and you have worked a lot of long hours and you always tend to work the night shifts for them and they are very grateful for that. So they don't question it and you, you, you get away with your black. So anyway, Joanne goes home after court and she has a letter. And, of course, Barnaby also goes home with you after court. It's a perfumed letter, indeed, with the letter B on the front of the envelope. Uh, so assume that you are handing Barnaby the envelope. So when there's a lull in the deep and interesting conversations that me and Barnaby usually have. Yes. So basically, the moment you walk in the door. Yeah. <laughs> an opportunity presents itself yeah. rapidly, yes. Yeah. I'm just going to hand it, like, kind of hand it over and go, uh, child at the court asked me to give this to you. I think her name was Anne. Oh, no. I didn't open it. I... He takes it, opens it. Yeah. Um, there is, when he takes the letter out, a little bit of glitter. <laughs> <laughs> yes! And, uh, he looks the at it. The princess and the emo. He scans, <laughs> he scans the, the letter for... A scant couple of seconds and then says, oh, no, I can't deal with this. And he throws it on the floor and, and walks off. And then, so in fact, we'll say to you, I'm going out. And now your floor has glitter. <laughs> yeah, there is now glitter and a scrumpled bit of paper and envelope on your floor. <laughs> yeah. It does strike you that bending forward with your hip as it is, is not pleasant. But... I'll send him a text saying, clean this up when you get back. Okay. You sent him that text. Yeah. You're pretty sure he receives it. I don't expect an answer. Okay. Just... <laughs> so suffice to say, in the days that pass between this event and when we get to our current time where you're with the coterie having your conversation, 
the glitter and the letter remain on the floor of your flat unless Joanne takes action to remove them. <laughs> yeah, I think she will over the course of the um, over the course of the days. <laughs> sure. Quick question: Do you look at the letter? You deliberately do not look at the contents of the letter. Okay. Not for him. Wow. Well. You are restrained. That makes me sad. Yeah. But that's fine. You you do the honourable thing, and you you put it away. So we now come to the current timeline. You are currently staying, or you're in uh, at Finn's place, in the large converted barn, which has the the books and things there. You had been gathered together as a coterie and left to discuss what you were doing. You were kind of mid-conversation. Uh, Silas had been talking about an issue he would like to resolve. Theodore looked like he was about to leave. <laughs> and after, I, after shooting the lock yeah. on her chains? Yes, you are no longer in chain. Well, you are. You, you have kind of funky cuffs, but you're no longer chained up. It's also another issue it's with going cool. to work, of course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to hand back over to you, players. So as I was saying, <clears throat> see you later, guys. And I start walking to, towards the door. It looks funny. I can't remember why you were leaving. Oh, because you were. Uh, the conversation was about dealing with like a mortal. A <laughs> no, it's like it's basically. Oh, we need to get our heads into this. Is what? What is it about? Is this kind? But are you serious? We need to get. Like sponsorship, oh, yes. and then the conversation yes, resumed about a kind, and was like, "No, can't be bothered with this. Uh, we have a job to do. I'm gonna do my part." And I started walking towards the door. So Theodore is walking towards the door. I will call, call after him. Uh, Theodore, this this gets us both things. This is a this is a, 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 a something that he's been asked to do by a knight of Oxfordshire. So if we do this, we get what we need. Really, right? Elaborate. Well, I don't know yet because he hasn't done it. But I mean, I thought he would want to hear about it. Silas? And the, the, the task that I've been sent is to, is to uh, bring, the, uh, br bring, bring this specific mortal down. And... Uh, what do you say about how you got to do it? Oh my god. <laughs> I would rather not... I, I would, I'd rather not kill him. I'd rather not kill him too before we know what, what, why is it, what's his beef with this guy? What's your beef with this guy? He and I, he and I were studying the, uh, the, the dramatics in college and he made certain moves against um, the female members of the class going more specific, going heavily against one that I care for. Um, getting to the point where several of us had to step in. A, uh, he's uh, a talented bastard. I can get I'll get on that, but he is an asshole. So and the police were involved? Or no, not? no. The, the the police were not. The police were not involved. But I was at, at that. Um, Sir, Sir James uh, asked me who, if any man, uh, do I hate? So did he assaulted or abused any of the? Ladies, in your class, or your faculty, or the well, right, we d we didn't let it get that far. So you have a suspicion. <clears throat> well, we, we were pretty sure he was he was coming close, but we weren't gonna let, we weren't gonna let that. That's this seems fine. more personal. I know. Also, to completely and totally irrelevant mm. to what we are looking for. Um. We need to have the sponsorship of two citizens or a knight of Oxfordshire. Who has put this task before him, whether or not we think it's relevant. That is a task of his bloodline. Whatever we do to aid him, it's going to deal with a mortal, a kind. Right. I do not think any knight of Oxfordshire will back us up just because we managed to deal with a mortal. It mattered to him enough to ask for it to be done. No, I, oh. <clears throat> I do have an idea of how to get sponsorship from relevant, I'm not saying yours isn't, yep. but relevant tasks. I have different different ideas on that. Right, yeah. Okay. In addition well, to that... Any ideas that you lot have? In addition I to will that... Work, I will work with you. In addition to that... Assuming that my skill sets can be relevant. Mm -hmm. In addition to that, we have the, the whole thin blood thing. Uh, where what thin blood thing? Well... 
them not knowing what sort of tribute to give, which again... I got that sorted as well. Uh, I start working from the door okay. towards the place, to, okay. towards the center again. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> let's say... Let's say this person did commit an atrocious act. Something he must be punished for. Now, your... I would assume grandsire? Great-grandsire. Great, oh, great-grandsire. Um, founding member of Oxfordshire wants you to... I think your word to use was undo him. Undo I have an idea how to do that, but I would only reserve it if he has ever, at that time or later, gone beyond that line. I that seems not... sensible to me. Yeah, I, I don't know what I don't know what he's done the past few years. I haven't kept track. Okay, what you got a suspicion? Let's put it this way, Mister Shaw. I will assist you, pretty much taking care of the whole thing. As long as you do two simple things. One, look into this man and try to find someone that could have been assaulted. Or see if you can find any evidence. Should you find some, <clears throat> we will secure the man. And um, I believe in the space of a month, I can break his body, mind, and spirit. I could break his body in a, about an hour. This will take a little of a special touch. This is the definition of undoing. The man will never become a threat to anybody else, nor to himself. Now, you don't want to know the details, but rest assured, that Edward? Ed Eric. Eric. Will be no more. If. In exchange, I will ask for your help when I try to impress a Knight of Oxfordshire. I'm willing for that. Which one's on your radar? Hmm. Founding members. More, the family members are no good to us. Founding. Oh, members. founding members. Right. Yes. Such as the prince. Yep. Uh, well, talking about the prince, when I uh, gave my gave my oath, uh, I was also told that they have a potential task for me that require that will require potential distraction and physical skills. Well, you're good at picking up tasks. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. have been. Um, again, I have no idea what this what this will entail, and you have a lot of experience, so I, again, I have, I've got no idea what this is going to be. I will offer my help in exchange for help. <clears throat> again, yeah. with another Knight of Fox for sure, Sir William, the Prince's child. What help do you want? Sir, Sir William was wasn't Sir William the one that spoke up when? He right. Didn't... I have been told that I. Was not conscious at the moment. And he, yes, came with, yes. he came with your sire when we, we got you yes. out of the place. Yes. Yeah. Um, the, he's a very respectable hmm. uh, knight. So I am of a mind of redeeming my shameful failure in the eyes of the prince and Sir William. Make him know that his assistance did not go in vain. That I will absolutely help you with. One as well. We are team for now, so I will offer any help I can give to <coughs> any of you. Well, if this thing with it, Eric pans out, <clears throat> I will need your help with certain medical supplies and you checking up on his physical state every once in a while. I don't want to. I don't want him dying on me in an unduly time. But yes, uh, it can be done. It can be arranged. A month, I assume, would be enough. So you want some help investigating I whether could, or not this guy is guilty? Yeah, I, I, yes. I could use that. I'm, my skills are more focused for, I, I believe, more in the moment. I know a good private than... investigator. Cool. That's perfect. So if you two can investigate all you can, including his place's residence and 
you need anything in the way of that sort of research for your plan with Cerulean? What I... No, what I need <clears throat> is proof or evidence, incontrovertible evidence that he is, in fact, someone that deserving of the treatment I'm going to give him. Oh, wait, I think we're talking across purposes. You're talking about Eric. Yeah, I'm talking about Eric. Right, sorry. okay. So find that, and then securing kind should not be an issue. I use Let me know where he is. I'll pick him up myself. Thank you. I will need your assistance. Do you guys have any other ideas? The, the more support we garner, the better we look. Yes. And I'm not going to lie, I'm going to try to hug the spotlight since I failed my test. So I think I have you absolutely. to prove mm -hmm. myself above and beyond. I yes. am absolutely happy to sit in the background for this. Yeah. Um, uh, and I know for, well, for how my line would look at it, they would expect no less than a knight of pleasure to be vouching, vouching for me. Um, we will try to get as many as we can. Yeah. One each would be enough. But it's also an unsurmountable task to get them in a very short amount of time. So I believe this is something that requires planning. There are only four of them, right? No, there no, are no. the founding more. ones, there's only four of them. And oh, yeah. one of them doesn't count for you or I. Yes, so. Absolutely. But there are other knights of Oxford. Well. Also, having the support of both knights and citizens will be looked yes. kindly. Well, if, if we're laying our cards out on the table, I'll have things in the future that I'll want help with. Okay. And uh, for this whole case of Sally, I will be on her side. I will be helping her do whatever I can. Uh, remind me of this. I have heard about it in passing. So, at court, Sally got into... I believe it was a poaching argument with Rupert. someone else. With Rupert, for the the oh. sake of the sake of explanation, is Wallace's blood brother. Oh, okay. So a child of Sir Rafe. Right. If I remember correctly. Cool. Right. There was a poaching argument that seemed in Sally's favour. Rupert denied the charges, and Sally demanded a duel. Mm -hmm. So hold a volunteered as Sally's champion. Without, a, without hesitation. Without hesitation. It was almost immediate, but yeah. Rupert was a little bitch boy and decided to try and cower out. He wanted Rafe, but Rafe... Uh, no, they... Rafe shook his head. But there was a conversation that took place between Rafe and somebody else. I don't know the guy. Uh, I can describe him. I don't know what his name is. And Rafe stood down. And he stood Wallace down. So I don't know what the details are, but mm -hmm. Rupert is going to have representation because that's what Rafe has asked. So, so let me get this lay, straight. these cards out, your, I will be helping Sally in any way I can. Your sire's blood brother the, yeah. did not get the support of his blood brother, a knight of Oxfordshire, right. nor his sire, his own sire. Right. Which means... To, be a, to have a champion. Which means, that doesn't mean he's not going to get something out of it because afterwards when we were leaving Rafe told all of us in the family so to speak that he wanted us to sort the situation out for Rupert. Okay so but it's not that he's been cut that, out. No it's not that he's been cut out but there is something about this that means for probably social reasons Rafe could not at that point be seen to be supporting him. I guess it's related to whatever the other guy was saying because actually in terms <clears> of that we don't know what it was that he did. Now I had it in mind to go and speak to Rupert for which I will have to speak to Wallace. Make no mistake about it. I am absolutely for Sally in this. But I cannot be seen to be for Sally in this. So I will help you from the background. That's, I'm not, I don't want to make... Uh, I don't want to speak out of turn, but let's make a friendly reminder of trying to keep our bloodlines happy the most we can. I know you... These two things are at odds, right? They may so, not be. Well, no, they are at odds, because I can either help Rupert or I can help Sally. Why not help them both? Well, that doesn't sit so well with me. Um, how about... I would assume that uh, Mr. Rupert 
What's her name? Oh god, I can't remember. Uh, Turner something, Smythe, Smith something. I don't know. Let's call him Mr. Rupert for the time. Being. Sure, Mr. Rupert. So, Mr. Rupert, I assume he's not <laughs> thrilled of being challenged to a no. duel for a something that could be seen as shameful as poaching. I imagine he's not thrilled because he's probably not so well equipped to win this without someone standing in his stead. Well, but, I, you know, I, I wouldn't assume that uh, having Sir Holder jump in to represent Ali as a champion, I would assume that she also would not necessarily be up to the speed of fighting herself. The thing is that it's a matter of honor. I right think now. though, I think this can be resolved without coming to conflict. The difference between Rupert and some other people in the family is he likes to talk. I've talked to him and uh, he's a guy who uh, who is easy to get to talk. So on that basis, mm -hmm. it might be the fact that I can find out from him what the hell caused this to happen in the first place and that facilitates Sally's victory in this. Also, if we know what it is, make a more informed okay. decision about may it. I, may I suggest a different course of action? Sure. Again, quid pro quo. So whomever wants, I, I, I have no part in this. I have no need. But I can intervene for your support in the aforementioned ideas. I already I told have. you I would help you with that. Yeah, but now It's you not will, contingent on this. Now you will get something out of it. Cory friendly, or at least clan friendly. Sure. I'm less worried about being accepted. It's in Wallace and Rafe's interest for me to be accepted. So if I don't do something about it, they will do something about it. So some way or another it'll pan out. So Mr. Rupert. Yep. You say he's a talk talkative man. Yeah. So, and so it are his would child. be it would be easy to get him to talk and eventually drive the conversation until something that he could give. It's probably Sally. what got him into this position. Yeah, exactly. It's probably what got him into this position in the first place. Yeah, but what if, out of this, Sally gets something? Something that Rupert can provide and that she desires. It's just a matter of making Miss Horrock agree. I have uh, seen her firsthand when you have to with Mr. Uh, with Sir Holder. Uh, oh, she, she can be... She can be impulsive. Difficult to persuade. Yeah, it's great. It is, it is a good, a, a very good trade, the perseverance and resilience and adherence to your ideals. But She's in this case, right. yeah, but by being right, instead of having just the satisfaction of winning the duel, she will gain something. She will have a tangible something in the manner of. Probably a boon. Well, Could this be solved by convincing Mr. Rupert to give Sally a boon and convincing Miss Herrick to agree to such thing and withdrawing from the duel? Depends on what happens. But I gotta speak to Wallace to get his permission to speak to Rupert. But if I can speak to Rupert, I can find out what oh, he Oh, that's the thing. I don't need anyone's permission to speak to Rupert. And I have, I think I have the way to do it. All right. My sire, Isabel. If I don't have to speak to him, all the better for me. Yeah. Uh, she's both Miss Horrock's co roommate so she knows her. Right. But also she's Ventru, just like Mr. Rupert. Just like so, us. Right. So it'll be a Ventru aiding a classmate. Solve an issue with a code remate. She can mediate, and I don't need anyone's permission to intervene in that conversation. Sure. I would need you to butter Miss Horrock up. Me? For the deal. Any any of you. Sure, I can do that. Like, if you... I've known her the longest, that shouldn't be too difficult. If you can manage to convince her that this is actually in the best interest of everybody... I'm not certain she'll be convinced of that. Um, do you think that support of Sir Holder <coughs> comes for free? No, I don't. But what I do think is that what happened with Sir Holder proves that she doesn't necessarily care about anything outside of being seen to be right. That is yes. what's most important to her. Yes. So she might not give a good goddamn about him, whatever that is. Understood. And that's why it's going to take a lot, of, a lot of convincing. But I do not believe it is impossible. Your way sounds complicated. Sorry? Your, way, your way sounds complicated. My way sounds less complicated. Allow a member of your bloodline, of your direct bloodline, 
to be shamed in court. It's already happened. Until the duel is settled, if there is something I know about our duels of honor. Well, it's true to say I can't say and much about that. A duel of honor is the decis- a deciding factor on an argument. Right now, Miss Hurg has a claim of poaching. And Miss Rupert denies it. Whomever wins the duel is right, and that is the letter of the law. It's a stupid law. It, it doesn't make it right. It not doesn't. If the fact, not if the facts say differently. It doesn't. But it is the way things are. This is not the only culture and the only place that solves matters in duels of honor. I'm sure it's not. So, right now, Mr. Rupert has not been shamed into anything. But he's undergoing right now a very, let's say, stressful situation in which he cannot get the support of his own bloodline. Maybe he can offer something to Miss Herrick. Maybe. And maybe we can get something out of it. If we are seen as a coterie working united to promote harmony between clans, we might secure for our efforts um, <coughs> the sponsorship of probably Miss Herrick herself, Mr. Rupert. People in, in that's of no value to people's. us. No, Mr. Rupert's support any... would not be helpful to you, but it would or be you. helpful for Mr. Shaw, myself. He's not my bloodline. Right. You see, our bloodlines so diverge. You're right. There is nothing in, in this for me to help. Except, of course, that I have to help because I'm obliged to. Because everything about this world And service to our clan is everything. So some people say. All right, let's do it your way then. So, I think that just leaves us to put some stuff in our calendars. I would like to know how fast do you need to do your thing for your... The the, the sooner it's done, the, uh, the, the better, but it doesn't need to be immediate. Okay, how about this issue with Mr. Rupert and Miss Herc? Uh, yeah, it's going to be, do be next, next court. court, so that is the more pressing one. When is next court? Will we know when the next court is? You ha- the date has not been announced, but you, be- you, will, have- you will probably know that it's going to be sometime in November. So, so we have about a month or less. Around a month, yeah. yeah. Maybe less, um, maybe more. Should I suggest we take that one yeah. with higher, yep. um, let's say urgency so the the fast the, the the sooner you can get an audience with miss herrick talk to her see what she desires figure out what can be joanne's doing that right that's what I you said yeah but it wouldn't be remiss of you to be there if we secure sir oh i'm uh, sorry i thought you said you didn't need me no no we do you are needed if so you... who am I supposed to talk to, Rupert yeah. or her? Her, Sally, her. Yeah, I don't think that works for me. Because my family are going to want me to talk to Rupert. Not necessarily. In... Right, no, absolutely. That is what they've said. They. That is I... what I have been required to do. Why, so... not, why not talk to both? Talk first with me. Because I... Her. And then come, to, come with me. I'm not going to speak to her. Because that leads to a whole world of trouble. Hmm. Then I would suggest, Mr. Shaw, would you help Miss Salt with her conversation with yeah. Miss Herrick? And then Mr. Riley and I can talk to our clan. That's, that sounds that right. works. I also had, um, you know, back on the, on the, on the, on the uh, thin, but I had an idea about that, which I... I had an idea which might help us in the future, which I wanted to run past you. I was planning to help them out anyway, regardless um, of what you two thought. So. Well, I know you, you were talking about the uh, ancient f- uh, full of tribute, but I was thinking maybe if um, maybe if I could uh, maybe, maybe I don't know maybe get fit, fit to help, maybe try and get on good terms 
personally with the thin that are around. <clears throat> Maybe make get a uh, sort of communication network of them. So yeah. maybe maybe then maybe then they would help us keep tabs on them for their safety. That well, doesn't sound like it's in their interest. Uh, well, what I have found out regarding the tribute, it is just as many things in this uh, city a test. It's a test to see how resourceful they are, how courageous, or how proactive. If they have any ideas, I would suggest whoever. I think I still have the, their contact details, yes, but I believe I you have a copy as well. If they have any ideas, encourage them to take them on. Mm. Even if the idea involves going to a kindred of Ox for sure, someone who is a citizen unlike us, and asking them directly, even if it's Sir Holder herself, presenting, like, Admitting ignorance is not shameful. We are not born or reborn with all the knowledge in this world. Let's see how they fare with that. Considering what happened with them and you two in particular, I think it's best that I lead this one. Up to you. I have more important You shot one of them. You stabbed their dog. I, 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 what? That's a big ass dog. I, I was terrified. I'm not gonna lie. I was terrified. That's a big ass dog. This is I, me I, being I, pragmatic. Yeah. yeah. It was a dog, Mr. Shaw. Yeah. A dog. I have never really come under direct physical assault in my life. I've done the actings of it, gone through the motions of stunts, but never in my life had I actually been truly physically attacked until really? that moment. No. Have you seen the size of him, Mr. Riley? I doubt many people would mess with him. I, I, exactly, and uh, and in that moment, I uh, I, uh, I reacted and well. just. Uh, so I'll get in contact with the with the with Norman. May I suggest next others. time, knock the dog out, stab the thing blood. Yeah, I will get in contact with Norman and the others and raise that with them then. Brilliant. Um, so does that conclude our business? I believe it does. I've I've got nothing else. I don't think. There's things I maybe ask ask of you two in the future, but for now, for me, nothing. Then right. it has been a pleasure to see you mm-hmm. tonight. Um, we'll be in touch. Um, and, um, for, I, can, can I see that uh, a couple seem to be still injured? Yeah. Yeah, uh, particularly Joanne. Yeah. Um, and I started and walking Theodore, the door. Yeah, both Theodore and John, you would suspect. Yeah. Um, if you guys need any help... Uh, trying to pack yourselves up, I um, I'm having to help with that as well. At some point in the future, maybe I've. This is still all very new. Yeah. Best sooner rather than later. But I can understand that. Evening, right. gentlemen, lady. Can I just walk out? Theodore. So you leave. I have reading to do, so I'll start doing it since we're here. So you're just going to start. Having a read of the books. Yep. I'll, uh, I'll, uh, I'll get you over the details. I'll, I'll see what I can initially find. Oh, know. for Maybe. this guy, I'm yeah. sure you. Yeah, because of course we can usually have that going in the background. Yep. If you want me, if there's a need for me to look through medical records for him, let me know. Sounds like a good idea. It's probably not. It's probably not, not, not a bad idea. But, um, I think first. If he assaulted somebody, yeah, um, I'll I'll speak to those of, who have know who might know more. I was more protecting, uh, more protecting those and those in the moment. I didn't really look into what he was doing at the time. Any information is always helpful. That's a slightly strange gambit from Theodore. I mean, if we just brought him in here and look in his head and figure it out, tell him he's telling the truth or not, I'll get why he wants the paper on it. He admitted it himself he's going to hold the spotlight. Yeah, but it's a quicker I'm, way of doing it. I'm fine with letting that happen. Yep. I just want my hands in as many in as many deeds as possible so I can have This is good. Even the support of a few, because if I'm here and yes, Theo had the spotlight, he's the good boy. But if they've noticed that I've helped in every single one, that's going to be worth more to the right people, I think. I want my hands in as few pies as possible so that doesn't put us at odds. 
I'll, I'll, I'll help, out, help out where I can, but yeah, help having seen it aided and, aided and done nobly as, as my line will expect. Um, is I, get, I get a sense, as the only one what I understand here, having direct bloodline to one of the founding members, that uh, I've got a little more of a weight on my head. Well, you have our support, you know that. But yeah, we're, we're, we're just help each other out, see where it goes. Just through. remember. Your life is your life. You don't mm. gotta live it by the way they see it. Mm. You're not the only person here who has a direct bloodline to one of these founding so-called knights. So, you gotta remember. Uh, you, you, you do? Sure I do. So does Theo. Uh, sorry, so. Po- point of order, Velvet. Yep. Uh, you don't. I know. Oh, in that case, the <laughs> ST will retreat into the shadows. <laughs> <laughs> Apologetically. <laughs> Yeah. Sorry! <laughs> Sorry! Never mind, it's blown! <laughs> it's, it's not it was blown. a good bluff! I like it's, it. It's not blown. <laughs> yeah. we'll it's, it's, it's not blown because my insight, if I was her lying, is not going to work. Yeah, 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 oh, yeah no, no, absolutely. And it's not like you have memorized every, like the, the founding members. No, 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 it's not no like you've no, memorized your lineage or anything. Sorry. <laughs> Bad so ST, the... ST retreats. <laughs> <laughs> With a stain. But it's just a, not, it's not a. Um, I'm just meaning. It's very easy in circumstances like this for people to make you think that you're obligated to do things, but just remember you're not. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure it'll be pleased enough when we sort out this guy, Eric. Yep. And do whatever Theo's thing is, whatever he tells us what it is. Yeah. But yes, it shouldn't be difficult. Yeah. So I'm hoping him, yeah. Well, you get the get that information to everyone. We'll do what we can to help you. Thank you, and again, uh, I can I can help because you, um, yeah, I help with just what um, I, I didn't. I, I, it's fair to think I just get fairly alright with that. Uh, but uh, from what I understand from uh, from from Thin. Healing those sort of wounds takes a lot and does take some time, so I will make sure I help you with that. Because I'm, as, are you still working? Not at the moment. Then we better use this time where you're not working to get you fetched up. Then you know more about this than I do. <laughs> well, you. If I can see your injuries and I'm not medically trained, you know how to fix that yourself, right? Oh, well, I can help you with that. <laughs> so at this point, um, we were saying earlier that we were going to use projects in this hey. in this session. This seems like a good point to talk about projects. And it sounds as if you have two projects you're currently planning on initiating at the moment. So which do you want to try and deal with Thin Bloods first? Or do you wish to... Not Thin Bloods. Um, Sally and... Sally and Rupert, Rupert first. Yep. Yeah. Is that your first call? Yeah. So tell me um, what your plan is. It sounds as if you've split yourself into two teams. Yeah. One set are going to work on Sally. One are going to work on Rupert. Yeah. And... Before, the, it, before me and Silas go, I'm going to go alone to her anyway and ask if there's any way I can help outside of this. Okay. So we'll, we'll bear that in mind. Yeah. I think the way it would be the a project with a scope of gaining a boon, securing a boon from Rupert. Yes. And uh, securing the equivalent of a boon from Sally so she accepts it in, in yeah. lieu of a... Yeah, unlike duel. most people, Sally may not be as accepting of a boon just yes. offhand if she's, you know, so the word got a good jewel in the mix. Okay, so... So, the, so that means the scope will be two. Two bones or two, yeah. Yeah, um, and that means the difficulty will be four okay. that you'll be aiming to hit. And that you will, your pull for meeting that difficulty is going to be a mixture of the, the background that is put to do it and also um, the skill, which will be persuasion in this case. You can, of course, assist, because you're working as a group on this, you can assist each other in achieving that to get extra dice for your pool. But most excitingly for people listening along, we have a special gambling mechanic. <laughs> uh, so you can, on, because this is a project that deals with multiple kindred in the city and different clans, 
you can choose any of you involved in the project, which is of course all of you, to gamble your coterie point on this project. Yes. Okay, well, who's, who's leading the effort? I have an idea, I can use my Mola as the background. Oh, I, I, I can use Isabel to be um, I, I, that's what I was planning mediator. As well. Sorry? That's what I was planning on as well. Realistically, <laughs> I can't put anything into this and background I, I, wise. I, I both have the skill and a relevant background, so I could lead. And if you have like the skill, you can give me dice. Yep. Or what skill? Like Persuasion. Persuasion is the skill. Yep. Yeah, so I have the skill. Yep. But I, I also, I suppose, my, from my perspective. With my backgrounds? With what backgrounds? I, I don't really have any backgrounds. Well, you background. have lots of backgrounds. You can use any background that fits your approach. that is relevant, but I don't want to use it. Oh, that's fine. So in that case, maybe <laughs> so, you should assist. Yeah, I'll yeah. Have However, to, I'll have to folks, assist. if you want to ju if you want to be involved to a full degree, you'll need to input a background of some kind. If you just want to do an assist, you can just do an assist. That's fine. Uh, I, I, I will go. I will go for the the assist gamble country point, and uh, I will back on the as well. So wait, then I can't gamble my country. You I can't. No, you can gamble on an assist. Okay, fine. Because you still stand to lose the country point if the yep. person fails. So what this means mechanically is you will be getting your sires to draw attention to the fact that you are trying to do good work for the city. That means if you then do successful good work for the city, everyone will go, oh, look, they did that. And then you will have more kind of better things being said about you. You will have more coterie points. OK, yep. you will also who, for each coterie point gets, gets put in, you get an extra dice. However, should you fail the roll, those coterie points will be lost. And it's worth noting that when you make this roll to launch the project, you cannot use willpower and you cannot rouse for it. Another thing to note, of course, is that before you make that role, we will also play out a couple of role-playing scenes just to kind of set the feel for how it is. If those scenes go particularly well or particularly badly, I may or may not influence the dice or the difficulties involved. If, if they're just reasonably successful, then they'll just be flat as they are. So what we all do is we will probably have a brief scene with Joanne and Sally, then we will have the uh, Silas and Joanne go to Sally and also a Velvet and Theodore I, go to I have to no Rupert. relevant background and no persuasion. So I don't think I can even assist in this. I, so, uh, before, I do, before I do that, mm -hmm. I need to have spoken to Wallace. Independent yeah, 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 yeah. That's fine. Yes, so we, can, we can run that into yep. the chronology. Yep. So what I'm going to suggest, because we're coming close-ish to the break, mm -hmm. but before we hit the break itself, let's run the pre-major scenes for the project. Okay. So, for example, you talking to Sally... Um, you probably having a quick chat with Wallace mm -hmm. and are there any immediate scenes or chats you two wish to do I at this stage? I just tell Miyuki to phone Kido-sama. Okay. With a particular request uh, concerning Chado. Okay. She will understand exactly what you mean and she will go to make that call um, and I I can actually give you the results of that call yes. potentially now. Um, sorry, Silas, any <laughs> things you are immediately intending to do at this point? Yeah, I'm, I'd just be um, going, to get, going, to, going to Finn to get him to help, to help you help mediate as well, as, as, as with them. Um, okay. As, as with Sally. That's so I'm you want about. Finn, you're going to be using Finn as your committed background yep. to this. Okay. So I think in order for that in order for Finn to be present as a as a as a background, uh, I will need a very brief chat just to see what you say, but it won't be brief. So let's quickly whip through those, and then we'll take a break, and then we will see what happens with this with this project. We will lose all, all our recovery. Yeah, I'm not yeah, gambling sure. any of this shit. We need at least one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gambling. Yeah, I'm gambling. Yeah. Okay, excitement, <laughs> excitement We're at the table. Lose. This is how the Cotery loses three points. Yep. Right. Seventy-five percent. No. In their first gamble, no less. We right. live in a box in Joanne's back home. Yeah. <laughs> I live in a flat. <laughs> so. You can't see my place. Um, <laughs> You are. Uh, you ask Miyuki to make the call. She does make the call, and um, she comes back and um, she says, "I've spoken with him, and it is very simple. It is uh, picture in your mind a ceremony uh, as it would normally be. Mm -hmm. You would carry out the ceremony, and uh, 
the recipient, the kindred recipient of the ceremony would be there and also one mortal recipient and you would prepare the tea for the mortal and they would drink the tea but the ceremony would also be for the other kindred and when the ceremony came to a close the other kindred would drink from the mortal and so would share in that experience that is what he said to me it actually makes sense now we need to find someone to perform the ceremony too Shion. so do you have any ideas ken san not on the top of my head she's and i look at her if she's thinking about herself it's like no she does look like she she doesn't say it but you think she's ready if you if you want her to Also, she knows the ceremony, she can help, yes. She does know the ceremony and she would give you extra dice. However, there is a risk that something can happen to her. Yeah. And the thought of someone drinking her blood... It's... It's eating me up. <coughs> I'll sleep on it. She says, I'm here if you need me, Kensan. You know that. So, uh, let's see. Let's, let's run down the table in order. So, uh, Joanne, you are going to see Sally. Um, it's not too hard to see Sally. You have means to contact her, uh, or Barnaby does at the very least. If you do ask him, he will say why. The little argument in court that happened. I understand the coterie want to help, but I just want to they do. thank her for everything she's done for me and offer my help in any way I can. You have met Sally, right? Okay. Yes. <laughs> okay, fine. Look, you do you, do you, you do you. So he'll set up uh, a chat. She will come. Well, are you happy for her to come to your flat or do you want to meet her somewhere? Okay. So she will arrive at your flat um, and she'll come in. She says, I hear you wanted to speak to me. Yes. Um, come, sit down. It's clean. She'll have a look. Yes. Yes, it is. And then she'll come and sit down. Uh, regarding. Well, first off, now that I'm officially a petitioner, I want to thank you for everything you've done for me and for everything Barnaby's done for me. And I just wanted, not even related to this petitioner stuff, just if I could help you in any way, as a payback. You want to help me? Yes, if I can, in any way. Hmm. I accept. I'll come back to you. Was there anything else? I believe my coterie and I want to help you in the situation that happened at court, but... Why? I don't need any help. Do you really think that Rupert stands a chance against a holder? I don't. Actually. She's going to rip off his arms. It's going to be brilliant. I know. But... We're a... We just... I don't want you to lose face, okay? Even... There's no danger this... of me losing face. That contemptible man is going to lose probably everything except his face. Okay, well, the offer is the offer of help is there, and we're going to do we'll do what we can. And if there's anything at all we can do, just I'll think about it. I have high hopes for you, Joanne. I'll try and think of something worthy of you, a way you can help me. Thank you. I just hope I can live up to your expectations. I have a question before I go. Your new forming coterie. Who's the leader? Probably say Mr. Penn at the moment. He's a very strong personality. Hmm. I will I'll keep that in mind. It's important that coteries have leaders. You know who the leader of our coterie is, don't you? Yes. Yes. Good. Thank you for this talk, Joanne. I'll be in touch. Anytime. She goes off. So, uh, that your... That's a nice way of, saying, of not saying who the leader is. Do you know who the leader is? Yes, I, I do. I just, <laughs> I'm pretty sure I do. I mean, it, it's obvious. You know what? It's obvious. It's so obvious, I don't need to even say it. It's like we have a telepathic thing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I said that I nicely was... Done, like, nicely yeah. done. Kudos. So, um, you are contacting Wallace. Yep. Yeah. 
All right. Um, Just, are, are you... I'm telling him. I'm, 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 I want to speak to him because... Very fast just to sort out about Rupert. Okay. I want to go he'll, speak to him he'll, right he'll pick you up in his car. I don't want you to do that. <laughs> <laughs> and I just go somewhere on my own. You leave me everywhere phone. anyway. He'll he'll pick you up in his car, and uh, as you're, yeah, and you'll, you'll be in the back. There'll yeah. be a driver, blah blah blah. But it's yeah. screened off. Okay. You'll yeah. be sat in the back, and he says, uh, "So, what's your plan, Velvet?" I haven't planned yet because I don't know what the situation is. The situation is pretty clear, I think. Can you fill me in then? Because it seemed, I, all I know is that when we were leaving, Rafe asked us to sort something out. I don't know anything else. Well, he does not want Rupert to fight a duel. Of course not, but he could. He wants you to find him a champion. Or he wants you to make this problem go away. He wants me to do that. I thought he wanted all of us to do it. He that. wants all of you to do it. I'm afraid my hands are tied on this one. He doesn't care who does it, as long as it's done. You can guarantee that Rupert's children are running around like chickens right now, trying to sort this out. All right, well, that seems to me to be fairly easily resolvable, so I'll do that. But, uh, I needed to make sure you were all right with me talking to him on this. You can talk to Rupert any time you want. Oh, I should warn you, once you start him going, he doesn't stop. All right, I know that. He even said that himself. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, I thought, uh, well, anyway, I thought I would check in with you about it. No, I appreciate that. You're moving in the right direction, Velvet. Long may it continue. Sure. Like I say, I have some introductions I might be making soon. Well, of course, I'll be available for them. Yes, you will. Right. <laughs> so. <Yeah. laughs> And then you well, open the door and th throw yourself out of the door. Yeah. No, I'll all. just save you the trouble. <laughs> Pleasure seeing you. Yeah. I'll, I'll just beat myself. <laughs> no, no, don't trouble yourself. So, uh, yeah, the, the, the concrete will do it for you. <laughs> Silas, uh, you're having a quick chat with Finn. That's very easy to do. Let's assume you meet him at his place. Yep. And so you're, you're sat with some nice books in the background and a couple of comfy chairs that don't match. And yep. uh, he says, <laughs> He's, "You're looking a lot better, though. That's good." Yes, th yes, thank you. And um, I, I get the sense that I got off lightly compared to the rest of them. Not at all. No. I think you're just stronger. Maybe. I mean, you're at least twice the size. It's got to count for something, doesn't it? Uh, thank you. Um, I, uh, uh, Miss uh, Joanne's Joanne might need a little bit of help, but. Aye. Yeah. She looks so good to me. Yeah, I'm thinking... I didn't want to say anything when she came, but it was a bit painful to watch, to be honest with you. <laughs> yeah, that's why I've uh, made sure to offer, uh, for, offer the helper if, uh, if she'd like it. <coughs> Aye, you're a good person, Silas. Yeah. So what can I do for you? Uh, I was thinking about the situation with, uh, with, with, with Sally. Uh, Aye. Yeah, because... Yeah, Aye. So, what about it? Uh, well, well, I was, I was kind of hoping we could... Um, Maybe do a bit, do a bit of uh, me mediating and maybe uh, resolve it. Maybe because well, we were talking about resolving it potentially without it coming you, coming to a duel. Maybe you you want you want me to get involved in this. I mean, I would I, I, minefield. <laughs> and I'm I would appreciate I would certainly appreciate it. It'd be, I uh, mean, you know, it's always very dangerous getting involved with Sally. You never know quite which way she's gonna go. Well, you do, what? What do you want to do with all? I mean, she's got a knight for goodness' sake. I don't know what Rupert's gonna do. Probably get another knight, I guess. I mean, if it's uh, possible. I think. I think uh, we'd, it's gonna be a nasty fight, though. Uh, we 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 uh, I think we I've been discussing with the rest of the country that hopefully we may be able to get resolved uh, without it without it coming to conflict. Maybe. You do. Well, we're, that's what we're hoping for, and. and that's what, that's what we're trying to work towards. All right, here's the thing, Silas. If you think you can do this, I'll back you up. Because I think it will be a good look. But if you're not sure, I'd say keep well away. <coughs> the number of people you could annoy by sticking your nose in is high. So it better be good. So you tell me. 
You ready? Can you do it? I'll do it. All right, and I'll back you up. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and that uh, is oh. how you sign a death sentence <laughs> for the coterie. <laughs> and that is where we will pause Glad for we a break. Glad we these points. <laughs> so, as, as tiny bladders leave. Yep. <laughs> Fuck you. Tiny, tiny bladders <laughs> is a new band forming. <laughs> Yep, that's so, first concept album. First of all, um, uh, I wanted to say a, a massive thank you to people who had who were following over the weekend the tweets for Bloodwise UK, the the oh, yes. twenty four hour stream. Thank you very much, uh, uh, TV Grange. They they made a fantastic job twenty four hours for an amazing cause. I used to work there. So it is it is much appreciated, people. That I saw uh, on the Twitter retweeting or commenting, it was, I mean, it was moving. So thank you very much. Uh, second thing, next week is mid season, and you know what that means. It means that we will have a one shot <laughs> set in the world of darkness. One shot, in which uh, I will be taking the storyteller seat, uh, or. One of our favorite tech ghouls, Mitch, is going to be joining joining Woo! us as a player. <laughs> Damn it! <Woo! laughs> and uh, uh, a random Peter will be joining us as tech ghoul himself. <laughs> or I'm so sorry in advance. <laughs> sorry. Tech ghoul in training, <laughs> as we like to call it. Uh, so we're going to be running next week a Wall of Darkness London 2001 Mortal. Um, one shot so it's going to be based on the world of blood on the Thames and blood on the Tamases but these lovely guys are going to be and girls are going to be all breathing <coughs> blood bags or <laughs> whatever you want to call them and luckily we already have the symbol for the overlays so. um, oh yeah 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 I, I gotta, I'm, I'm hoping not to die this time <laughs> Oops. High, <laughs> high aspirations for, yeah. the, for the session. Yes. <coughs> so, relationship map yeah. update. Obviously, there were a lot of uh, a lot of updates Oof. from mm. last session. A lot of new people. Yeah, cord. So, who's new on the map? Silas's whole family. <laughs> <laughs> so, that, <coughs> that's Felix and Sir Casto. Obviously, Sir James. Uh, and then Thomas Birch. Um, so, it's good for you people who are, you know, Ch child are a founding knights like all of us. <laughs> <laughs> I'll add those. I'll add those arrows on later. Um, and then Drutey we had, who was a messenger of the court, uh, and Sir William Felton, a child of the prince. And we then we had Adam and Miss, Mr. Whispers. So I've tried. If you go and have a look at it, it's under Shreknet files. <laughs> I remember. Hey, yes. well um, on the website, I've tried to kind of organise it sort of vaguely hierarchically so that you've got the prince and the other founding knight who we've met kind of somewhere near the top and then the court officer type people beneath and then us and then the pathetic mortals lower than that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so hopefully that'll be interesting. I don't think it'll be as big an update this time. But we'll update it again on Sunday probably. Mm -hmm. We'll see. Um, yes. So there is something else we should talk about. Yeah, but you're gonna be thrown the. Can well, we okay. the well, you can talk about it. I'm just gonna go. Okay. So, yes. reminder of the giveaway that we're gonna be doing at the end of the season. That lovely piece of jewelry was handcrafted by our dear, dear Amis Unbalanced, also known as Chris, who happens to be a silversmith and goldsmithing. He's like. His free time, I don't know. He's terribly talented, and that is something that, if you are a patron <laughs> or a Twitch subscriber, you are already in the raffle. Basically, that will be done through support on Patreon and Twitch. So if you are there, you will be part of the of the draw pool, and if you bring people along and they subscribe or. Uh, become patrons themselves, they will get their entry into the, the giveaway and you will get a referral additional entry yourself. So spread the word, let everybody know that Amazon Balance's nice piece of Blood on the Thames inspired jewelry is out for grabs and get subscribing people. Right on. One of us. More. More people. One of us. One of us. One of us. <laughs> and I think it's 
Question yeah. time. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that like a TV right. political show? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. So, th- 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 questions, right? I need to go. How am I spending anything? All right, questions? Questions. Yes. When is the Bernard Warrior of the Night game happening? <laughs> 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 well, it's fair to say there have been discussions yeah. about the Bernard Warrior of the Night. Uh, it could happen. But more than that, we cannot say right now. But we ha- the conversation has happened on more than one occasion. Yes. Often followed by laughter. But we have definitely discussed <laughs> it. And who knows? We'll, we'll keep you posted. Believe me, I want it. That, that's what I, <laughs> I want it. Okay. Who do you guys think Bernard Warrior would win in a fight? Sir Francis and Sir Kirstag. Sir Kirstag. We're talking down. about a physical fight here? Yeah. A duel. <laughs> Kirstag. <clears throat> Sir Francis? Kirstag has celerity and potence and presence. Wait, wait, this is Bruja and Kangrel. Yeah. No, Bruja and Nosferatu. Oh, the Bruja win. I'm, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's the combat clan. I, I, I have to go with my clan. And they've got presence, line. which is the I best defensive discipline. discipline. Oh, poor Sir Francis. I mean, she didn't even best us. I mean, come on. <laughs> <laughs> it's just as a point of order. Yeah, <laughs> like... <laughs> Four more. Actually, funny that you mention it. I mentioned it to Peter like after last session. He's like, dude, if if offering like something like seppuku or whatever would would mean anything if you were not dead. I would go like, does this work? <laughs> can you can you see how ashamed I am? But I think four more failures at critical roles that he's supposed to be acing because his pool is massive. So basically, every role he has been failing so far, four more of those. More oh, shame for it. <laughs> <laughs> it would be very, a poco at dawn. Very specific answer as well. <laughs> <laughs> Which means I have four a lot. Lot. <laughs> And that means we'll be holding you to it now yeah. as well. Peter, <laughs> oh, yes. my next role is Could you say the gamble. Voice cheese grommet. Uh, In which voice? Cheese grommet. <laughs> <laughs> Get those last trousers. Or those are the wrong trousers. Those are the wrong trousers. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's still sinister. <laughs> Okay, okay. Uh, serious question <laughs> for the players. What has been your personal favourite scene or event to play through so far? Does this, this have to be one we were in? Yes, that you've played through. Okay. Okay, who wants to start? Is this is this in game or with the pro, does with the, the prologue count as well? Oh yeah, does the prologue count? Mm. Preludes. Mm. Let's go with in-game so other people at the table. Yeah, yeah. About. let's just go in-game. Sorry, Phil. Um, I think it has to be the only role that I have succeeded on. <laughs> like Theo trying to talk over the phone with Joanne and going like, oh, there's someone running. <laughs> and, you know, shot in the knee across a hole, past Silas, past the dog, past the thin blood, <laughs> on the leg, like surgical, boom. Sorry, we're saying? <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. So it was, I think it was, no, I think the whole situation was like Theo doing his stuff and people losing their shit around him. And he was like, I'm with a bunch of amateurs. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you are. Poor <laughs> agent 47. Yeah. <laughs> are you one of you to go first? Um, so for me, like, for me, so I think. Um, it's probably just on the same theme as bunch of amateurs when you tried to dominate me. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah, yes. Like, yes. Really, that's all you've got. Yeah, that was yes. a cool. Scene. That was cool. That yeah. was cool. That it was, was very cool. I, I, th- I, I think for me, so so far it is when um, Cyrus was uh, discussing with, with Finn about the fact that Joanne is <laughs> medical. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. All these three factors are broken right here. We broke all three of them. Yeah. Yeah. I could have to be for that one. But... That was a good. Ooh, that's good. That was a funny scene. Yours I... has to involve Barnaby in some capacity, <laughs> right? No, I think it was actually when Joanne looked up at Sir Francis and just went, "Enough of an example for oh, me." Yes, yeah. Oh yes, yeah, that's badass. Good, yeah. that was Initially, badass. 
what I had going through my head was she was going to go again. Yeah. Show me what you really think. But then you saw the amount of damage and you thought, <laughs> yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I've only got one hit left. I mean, we, uh, we, uh, it's gonna, I think it's going to go up the website for, for this for this weekend, but we got we, we, fan art of that moment. <laughs> yeah, the yeah. fan art of that moment oh, is excellent. Oh, yes. And that will be on the blog on Sunday. Oh, amazing. Ms. Furt, you're amazing. Thank you so much. Oh, can I just say, on a random note, we uh -oh. often talk about um, supporters and, and people who are live in chat, who we love, of course, which we do. But also, if you're watching us on YouTube, we also love you. And thank you for those who watch along and also comment. And people who are listening to the sweet, sweet sound of Peter's voice on the podcast. <laughs> so I often do on a coach early in the morning. There you go. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so, so much for everyone who watches it. It's you it who are so listening to us you. in the podcast <laughs> while driving around. Turn left. <laughs> <laughs> right now, no matter what yeah. you're doing, turn left. In 300 meters, <laughs> turn left. In make you turn, make you turn, make you turn. How about you, Peter? What has your, what's been your favorite uh, Do you know, I find that quite a difficult. I think maybe the whole sequence with kind of court. Well, maybe, actually, I think my favorite bit was when the players went to meet the prince yeah. and had the whole, like, being led in with the herald and that kind of thing. Just AKA he, you wanted to watch a squirm. Because, okay. just because, <laughs> but, but also I, I liked it for lots of reasons. I liked being the Herald because the Herald is disgusting. And I, but I also liked the way the players swore their oaths and the, and the tension of the scene and that kind of stuff. So I, I enjoyed that a lot. Um, let's go for one more question. Okay. okay. So, who's been everyone's favourite SPC so far? Finn. Favourite SPC. Finn. Finn's amazing. So, f one vote for Finn. Keep it in clan. Just thinking. <laughs> so loyal. So loyal. You don't have to like. I have to. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just your yeah, favourite yeah, yeah, SBC. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I you see the to... wheels turning at the release. I least think. Least. I think it should. I think it would be Sally for me. Sally, like the intensity, like she says, "Hello, how are you? I've been fine." With enough intensity to rise to blood pressure <laughs> from across a room, like I've been fine. Everything has been dandy. Fuck woman. So no, I, I think it's a it's a very nice, interesting, intense character. Nice, interesting, intense. Yep. So, favorite uh, SBC? Yeah. Uh, so I do for uh, for me probably Wallace because he, you can as a player Bastard. you can do so much with that SBC if if you're in a scene with him. Yeah. There's a lot that's interesting about that type of interaction. So. Outside of character biases, so hold up. Yeah. Ooh. Nice. There's something to be said about someone who just sits there and goes, work for me. You want to say someone who goes, come on! Yeah. I mean, uh, it's so hard, it is only one of the people I really want to see fight, but I want to see the James Douglas swing that blade. <gasps> Dude, it's not funny when you have a two handed yeah. sword yeah. and potence. Yeah. All you have to do is fail him and you'll get your wish. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, so, that's another project! So, I, I, can, I, can, I can work with that. Yeah. <laughs> Throw Silas under the bus. So, thank you very much for your questions, much appreciated. Uh, right, I think we should probably get back to it. Yes. So we are currently at the stage where you are embarking on your first collaborative project oh together. Yep. Um, so the two of you that are planning to meet with Rupert, yep. where are you planning to try and meet him? Well, are, you, are you inviting him somewhere to meet I you? Ask Isabel for advice on that one. I, I, I think I will have a contact detail for him. Well, I'll get one from Wallace. Yeah, you. I mean, getting Rupert's contact is, is easy. Yeah. It's where you want him to meet you. What's the setting you want to meet Rupert Probably in? Probably his if he's yep. happy having us. I want him to feel comfortable in an environment he thinks he controls. Just gonna go wrong. Sorry, that he's just gonna go. <laughs> yeah. All right. So in that case, uh, you will get to meet Rupert. In a uh, private bar, in a in a, in a it, it's it's quite it's basically it's part of a gentleman's club. Of course it is. And uh, it's it's one of those ones which doesn't have a sign outside because you either know about it or you don't know about it. It's in the centre of town, and uh, yeah, you are obviously when you've made these arrangements, you are expected. Uh, is there anything I should know when you're before you go? Any strategy you two are talking about, or any things you're taking with you, or any other stuff, or are you just going to go meeting? 
So I will uh, uh, brief Theo uh, what I discovered from Wallace, which is that if, if a fight goes ahead, we, uh, we as a family, not, not you, you know, <coughs> are expected to source a champion for Rupert. So that's what he's going to be looking for. But that's okay, because my, my proposition in that is a straightforward one. I will just put myself forward to do that, because it will make the fight shorter and resolve I, the problem. I would assume you would not be allowed, because I think any champion should potentially be a citizen. No, it's not what he said. Mm. I, I don't know the, the rules of the I don't know the, the rules tool. either, but it's an option. I, I doubt a non-citizen would be allowed to champion. Okay. I, I might but be that's wrong. what he's going to be after. Okay, um, so, let's avoid that course of action and try to convince... Mr. By this time, I should have known his surname. Right? Turner Smith. So, um, let's try to get Mr. Turner Smith on board with offering up <clears throat> something in exchange of making this basket problem go away. I would assume he's used to doing that, probably throwing money at, at problems. Mm, I guess probably. Okay. So, let's assume then that you, you go... Yeah. Uh, you're in a, a little booth, um, nice padded seats. <clears throat> that was kind of when you sit and you sink slightly down into. I, I call this type of seat. Uh, there is a a, a polished round table because it's a curved booth, and uh, yes, Rupert will be sitting sort of pretty much in the centre. So you are you. My first question when you come in and and you meet. In fact, you you'll come in and meet him. He will stand and says. Um, Oh, delightful to see you again, Velvet. So approach him with my hand. Yeah, and yeah. he will he will shake it. He says, Ah, this is you must be Mr. Penn. Mr. Turner Smith. Okay. Pleasure in making your acquaintance. Says, May I call you Theodore? Um certainly will. Oh yeah, marvellous. Certainly marvellous, marvellous. Well do do sit down, do sit down. Thanks. Thank it's you. good of you to meet us here. So he'll sit. Where are you I, two sitting? I just start moving Sitting to his uh, to his left. So to his left, yeah. And I just look at Velvet as in, just put yourself on the other side. What are the other chairs available? There are no other chairs. It's a it's a curved booth, okay, like sure. a like it one long matter. thing. I'll so you can either the... sit. Effect, you, your options are to sit on the other side of Rupert or yeah. to sit on next the to Theodore. Yeah, that's not very convenient for talking. So I'll just sit the other side of him. You sit. You you both sit down. Now, do, do either of you require any refreshment of any kind? I'll be all right, thank you. Uh, I, I would be delighted, but there is a, a matter of personal tastes and palates that... Well, perhaps I should inform you that I am uh, one of the senior members of the Venators, and so procuring certain tastes is rather my line of business so if you do have any requirements we if we can't deal with them tonight certainly in the future should you come and visit i would be able to accommodate you that sounds extremely interesting uh, can you tell me more about the venator of course of course <laughs> conversation so he feels happy but also getting some information about this sort of trip there are there is a just as you are a, a legacy being formed from a coterie, Veem. I am <coughs> part of a coterie of Venators. It is our duty to make sure that those uh, elders of the city are always provided for in matters of the blood. And of course, should other kindred of Oxfordshire re require certain support, we can always do that. Uh, especially should there be some entertainment or other business that requires a you know, a, a, a special visitor from another city, for example, who requires something uh, a little special to mark the occasion. That's what brought you in a conflict with Sally, right? Oh yes, I was simply doing my duty. But uh, she's, the thing is, you see, there's this terrible business between the, the, the gatekeepers of the North and the South. Uh, it's always very clear if you're into the northern side, uh, beyond the north of Oxfordshire, or beyond the south of Oxfordshire, everybody knows which side you're in. It's the line between the two, you see, and the, and the border of the city. There's lots of dispute over that. It's these gangrel, they're ever so territorial without being 
precise. Obviously, we are very precise, and we have contracts, and we have arrangements, but they, well, it's not, I wouldn't speak ill of our esteemed, but sometimes their methods are somewhat impenetrable. As far as I am concerned, I was well within my rights to, um, to gather the blood that I was gathering in the name of the Prince and the Knights of Oxfordshire, of course, <laughs> But as far as Sally is concerned, I was poaching. I had stepped over that border to do what I was doing, which, of course, is complete nonsense, as any sensible person knows. But as I'm sure you are coming to learn, Sally is not sensible. But if that's bound by contract, it's got to be laid out somewhere and can be proven, right? Well, you see, it all rather depends on who you speak to. If you speak to Sir Holder, well, then she will tell you that I was in her territory without permission. However, if you were to speak to Miss Blanc, who is the northern gatekeeper, she would tell you that I was within her territory, and therefore there was no problem. Unfortunately for me, she was not uh, present at the last gathering. She's not, she's not the most frequent attendee of court. And I am, of course, currently in the business of trying to um, manage the situation, but the... Oh, the whole thing is a terrible headache. So the conundrum we're facing, well, you are facing right now, it is that there is this dispute about a, a matter that is certainly unclear and a challenge, a duel, has been... Yes, and, and it's rather, I am not, I do, <laughs> duels are such ugly businesses and I, I don't really want to be involved in that sort of thing, so I'd really rather resolve <laughs> this before we got there, to be quite Sounds honest like with you. Sounds like a good idea to me. Yes, quite, quite. But well, we're all much Sally, more. Right? Well, oh is. goodness, she's a terror. She's not. Well, that is precisely why I'm here. Um, as you are well aware, I am the, the child of Isabel Tedesco. Yes, yes, I, I am aware. She's ever so charming. And yes. uh, she's not only a, a fellow venture as myself. She also is. A co roommate. Of yes, Spirit. indeed, indeed. A, a terrible head. I don't know how she remains so calm, honestly. Um, Isabel is. Such a treasure, Isabel. Yes. Uh, a woman with incredible patience and. Well, she must. Yes. She must. I mean, if she wasn't one of us, they'd have to make her a saint. Yeah. <laughs> now, um, I am sure, uh, I'm sure you would agree with me that this is a most unpleasant situation you have been found yourself in. Oh, horrible. And, uh, most unpleasant. Right, rightfully or not, uh, the way out is to try and think, circumvent this dual thing by trying to come to an agreement. Maybe convince Miss Herrick to drop... Oh, her. but it's impossible. I mean, if it was almost anyone else in Oxfordshire, I would, of course, agree with you, but... Well, she's so difficult. Well, we, we just got to give her something that's more available to her than this. It's a matter I mean, of... Have you heard about where I come from and where I was before? Well, I, I have heard some rumors that are rather titillating. I wondered if you might elaborate a little. Um, perhaps on another occasion, but... Oh, you tease. Um, let me assure you that it, it doesn't change things, regardless of where you are. Some people can be convinced to change their position for the right incentive. Now, would there be any way that we can convince you to perhaps show as a token of goodwill some deference to Miss Herrick in exchange for her forgetting about well, it all rather depends on what is seen as an appropriate gesture. I suppose I might be willing to make some overture of peace. The problem is I, f I fear that unless I was to, well, rather splay my guts open for her and give her everything I have, she's not going to accept because she's so unreasonable. You made an offer in the court, right? I was trying to persuade... Exactly, exactly. It was my hope to, to get uh, some kind of agreement, some... Hmm. But what she was, wouldn't even hear of it. She wouldn't even listen. What That's, was the offer going to be? Well, I don't know. I, I hadn't fully made up my mind. I was rather flustered. It was all out of the blue, to be honest with you. But I was willing to make some, some concessions. One must make some concessions in order for the, the world to turn. That's business, is it not? Right. So perhaps the reason Miss Horrock did not agree to your attempt <clears throat> is probably because since you don't know her, 
that well. You could not pinpoint exactly what she needed in such a short amount of time and under such I, amount I, of pressure. I, I do hope you're not just teasing me with the illusion of hope and you're actually going to give me some hope. Is that, uh, is that I, where this uh, is leading? I am willing to ask my sire to step in as a mediator for this matter. Really? And uh, I will. I have already talked to my co-room members. This matter was brought to us by Mr. Riley, who was very concerned about his bloodline. As oh, well, any that's good very decent of you. Kindred of Oxfordshire. And, uh, well, our coterie in full is making an effort to keep the peace in Oxfordshire. Oh, yes. Well, you are rather new. I do know. I still remember when I first came here. And uh, it's a, it's a, well, I'm glad to see you being so forward thinking. Now, I'm not making any promises, but I will say this. If you could somehow get that stubborn Malkavian to listen to reason and be a decent person for once, well, I wouldn't forget it. I would not forget it. I'm sure those of um, civil dispositions would also not forget it. Well, um, I do not hold it against me if I tell you that I will be forthcoming with that offer that you're making. Me and my other coterie mates need the support of citizens or knights. Of course you do, and we must look after each other, one way or another, would you not say? Okay. So perhaps if we spend the next moments discussing the, the realm of the possible, right. things that you could provide, things that Ms. R- Mr. Riley could help also... Facilitate. Facilitate? Hmm. Yes. That sounds like a wonderful use of our time. Let me just get a drink. Yes. Uh, absolutely. And at that point, we'll break of scene. Yeah. But essentially, you will spend a delightful bit of time in Rupert's company yes. in which he <laughs> will discuss what he's willing to give Sally and we'll begin that discussion. Yeah. And, okay, and so at least he's involved. amicable yeah. to the yeah, idea. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's I'm, good. I'm, yeah, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna force you to roll on this one. I feel like that was that was good good enough with I know your your pools that you have particularly yep. assisting each other against Rupert so that's yeah, and the fact that I mean you are providing like the assurance that yep. anything else bloodline comes first yep. it's yeah. very reassuring for him so no I'm happy with that so so we can proceed without a hitch on this half let us see yeah you got oh, it yeah. now on to hard mode oh. so uh, <laughs> hard mode I mean with Where? Sally Fendry commits another yeah. venture to do a deal yeah, yeah. <laughs> We, we, were playing, we were playing the tutorial. Come on. It's like you're a mentor and you need to convince another mentor that he needs to go into a deal with you. Seriously? No. <laughs> we're dead. So, you two, where are you trying to meet Sally? Where, where would you like to meet her? Um, it's, it's not hard to get her to meet with you. She will agree to meet with you. So, where, where, are you, where would you like to meet her? I would certainly ask ask him for any suggestions on where or what places that she's most comfortable. He will say, Sally spends a lot of her time with young people, often who are not employed. So, I suppose cheap bars, or maybe, yeah, someone like that, I guess. Mm, Sounds good. (laughs) (laughs) Have you been healing (laughs) them? There's no chance you getting beat up there. <laughs> uh, well, uh, well, well I'll, I'll suggest that to Joanne and see what Joanne thinks. Do I have to? That's a place where apparently she seems most comfortable, so if we are to persuade her, we will want her to, her to be comfortable more than us. True, okay. So you're going to meet Sally in what, in like a student bar somewhere? Probably. Awesome. Uh, so in, so just as a quick question, are you using Blush of Life before you go there, yeah, so you can be. make your rolls? And Joanne, what are you doing about the fact that you look like someone who should be in hospital? Shut up! The longer five, your first human, drain them. Silas, it will occur to you 
one of the issues about the way she moves, obviously, is because she's not moving naturally, the clothes move all the around and things like that. You could potentially, you have a, you could try and help with that potentially, yeah. because you do know places where you can get clothes that will change yeah. your shape, and yeah. therefore disguise yeah. your actual shape beneath. Yeah, so I, yeah, I, I, I'd go see, I'd go see T about about that probably. Okay. Um, so you go, you're going to go and see T to get well, just, just so this is you're basically going to a costume department if anyone's wondering, and uh, you go to see T. Um, we'll do a very quick. Yep. So she, um, just quickly remind me what, t- tell us a little bit about T. So, uh, so T is um, uh, mid, mid 40s, uh, quite um, sort of, sort of shorter. She, uh, with a bit of, I believe I said a bit of a cheeky personality. She is a bit cheeky, yeah. Yeah, yeah I think a couple of kids. I remember yeah. Right. So the kids are not present <laughs> yeah. when you yeah. go this time. Well, sometimes they are. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so she'll see you. She will be basically replacing various bits of costume on a rack, and they're all kinds of different, like in order of like time period. Um, and as she's kind of working, you'll come in, and she'll she'll say, "Yeah, uh, hi, Silas." Hey, T. How you doing? Good. Good. What brings you here? Um, actually, I was wondering if, if I could get something to uh, get, get some bits. Um, what actually change the way uh, change the way someone moves moves in the gate? So something that would, you know, you know so the the props that would require for you mean like something that makes you look bigger than you are or, so, or like strong. Yeah. I mean, you, I, are you doing some kind of superhero thing? You're not <laughs> telling me about. And um, it's, uh, it's 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 more for uh, more more for more for a friend. It's not it's not it's not it's not for me. I'm just trying to. All right. Well, if you can give me the measurements, I can find you something. Yeah. I mean, we what are we talking? Are we talking modern day? Are we talking historic? Modern, modern day. Modern day. Right. Modern okay. Day okay. And and what kind of what do you want to look like? Are we talk, are we making them bigger. Are we talking bigger, bulky, bigger, bigger how? Um, I was, uh, so I'd give it. Yeah, give a description of what. You see, so you give her a description of. So essentially, you're assuming you're just going to give stuff that will not be too radical on Joanne, but will just give her a different. Yeah. And help her disguise her strange yeah. injuries and stuff. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll pick up like a pair of crutches or something, so I can like use that as a physical yeah. prop. To, like, yeah. yeah. And I together, like together with whatever, I it guess, would look I, like I, you I have a limb. Help you walk. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, was, I, I, I think that's something I may, my, I may already have. Okay, so yes, she will he, say. He probably owns crutches. <laughs> like so he bought them all right. Uh, yeah, so she T will say to you, sure, sure. Actually, there's something I need just from the top. Can you just. <laughs> and I'll go and go. Okay. Um, you have the feeling she's checking out your ass. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, 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 will, I will make a display of my ass. Okay. Okay. <laughs> An appropriate response. That happened. She seems very pleased. She doesn't say much when you come back down off the thing. She's just like, yeah. yeah." And then you um, you make your way. So, suitably disguised and on crutches, you make your way to uh, a a student bar. Um, Don't ask. Called Slugs. Slugs. Uh, Slugs. Slugs. It's called Slugs, and true to its name, it has a picture of some slugs, but they're quite smiley slugs, yeah. and a little circular wooden yeah. sign on the front. I'm guessing, the, I'm guessing it's probably near, nearest where I'm, where my residence is. Oh yeah, it's not that yeah. far from, I mean, basically, it's, it, Oxford's not that big a city, mm. and yeah, there are loads of university bars and, yeah. and, and things around. So, it's quite noisy in here, smells of beer, yep. the lighting is not great. The floor is slightly tacky. Your crutches will slip slightly. Luckily for you, this is not a problem. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I mean, falling over is not a problem. Everything else is a horrible problem. I mean, horrible. How do humans live like this? To go to our it is, club. Oh, no, it is horrible. Yeah. Disgusting. When you made, did you make your blush of life checks already? Yes. We and are is anybody... Uh, what's your hunger level? Two now. Two. Two. Two and two. So... You are very aware of these young, slightly sweaty bodies, animately, uh, you know, a lot of them not wearing that many clothes, enough that it will be very easy to feed from them. 
But it's, you, it doesn't, it's not you're compelled, but you're aware of it. You're aware of it around. So I say the music is loud. Um, Sally is sat at a table. There are a bunch of people all having what seems like a very passionate argument. Sally is not involved in this argument, remarkably. But she, she is just kind of watching it play out in front of her. Um, as you get closer, you will hear that it seems to be an argument about the best way to make a bacon sandwich. <laughs> What would you like to do? Um, but it's bacon sandwich. I think it's got to be soft and succulent, but a nice bit. It's got, it's got to be a good sound as well. But yeah, that's the point. So you're going to engage in the. So you're engaging the argument. No, I, I'm just making a remark to Joanne as we're moving towards. The <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So you'll hear someone camera, saying. Like in the office. Exactly. <laughs> I can imagine the scene like the two of you walking together. Then the, the, you look at each other. You look at the table. You look at each other. Then Sally goes like. No, it has to be this <laughs> way. And Joanne going like, <laughs> kill me. <laughs> so yeah, you will catch someone saying, if it doesn't have brown sauce, it doesn't count as you arrive. Like avocado. Brown sauce, brown sauce, wild. So are you just loitering at the, the table? I, I think we're gonna, just going to move. move. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so after a moment of you standing there, Sally will say, will, will, will say, oi, and some of them will look over at her and she says, can't you see she's on crutches? Make some room. And they get up and then she's like, and you lot, fuck off. <laughs> and the table clears. <laughs> like, so just like that, they go. Yeah. But you will, like when they're most of the way across the bar, that argument restarts. Yes. It's a long <laughs> way off. So you come and join her at the table. Yeah. Charlie's she's, busted brown sauce. Right. She says, so... How's it going? Yeah, I, I, I think we think things are going all right, um, for, the most, for the most part. <laughs> so, did you want something? Yes, uh, we thought we, we thought um, we, we had an idea for potentially helping you with the uh, with the situation in in court. What situation? I mean, the uh, well. The whole, the whole poacher, the whole poacher business. Oh, yeah, that. Yeah. And well, I don't think there's going to be much left of him for you to help with, but I appreciate the offer. I, I think, mean, I think she's got it in hand though. I, 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 He's gonna squirm. The other two in so our poachery much. may have found. Mm. They've not reported back to us. We're kind of doing this simultaneously, but. No, if, if we would have any knowledge, yeah. Yeah. I would call. If, if yeah. this is happening yeah. simultaneously... Oh, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah consider yourselves yeah. in the loop. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. what I'm just saying. Like. Yeah. If, it's, uh, if this is... Yeah. No, no, I, I'm not disagreeing. I was just surprised yeah. at the voice of Theo in the book. Oh, yeah. like, yeah. Okay, carry on. This is happening simultaneously, but the two Ventru and our coterie may be... Which is one thing. Yeah. This is a fairly safe place to talk. But careful of your key words. Mm. Yeah. They may have found a way to make him stand down. Well, of course he'll stand down. He's going to well, lose. And, uh, well, and is he? Wait, he's going to apologise in front of everyone. That's, that's what we're hoping will happen. Good. Oh, that's good. That's almost better than seeing his arms ripped off. Um. And so is 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 that is that what you would desire her seeing him apologise? Is that is that what you was? Uh, well, that's what I expected of him, but he tried to weasel out of it. He won't even admit he's wrong. Not really. He says he does, but when I wanted him to do it, to really do it in a way that mattered, he weaselled out. And do you know why? Because he's a weasel. He's a disgusting, slimy weasel. I can't say that I haven't met, I haven't personally met him. Well, but... with the way he talked in court, I kind of assumed that yeah. from what little I heard. Hmm. But yes, we've, the other two may have found a way to make him stand down and apologise to you personally. I don't know, they are incredibly good negotiators, but they'll let me know if we've got something. Well, I don't want him to apologise to me personally. I want him to apologise in front of everyone. I want the prince to see it. And I want the knights to see it. I want, I want all of those. Sir Rafe and all of that. I want them to see it. Set it off. I'm going to text that to Theo. 
that that's yeah. that she wants that to happen. Okay. Yeah, you can you can send yeah. that text yeah. off, no problem. Okay. I can text back. <clears throat> but first I will I will text um uh, Velvet. Okay. To see what he has to say while I just start drafting a response. Okay. So it'll come in a couple of minutes. Yeah, that was so. just like a... So let's assume that there's some text, if you're going to have some text chatter whilst you're oh, chatting with Sally. You, but yes. we'll wait for this scene to finish. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, I've now relayed that to them, so that looks, that looks like that's on the table at least. Well, that's, that's, that's what we're hoping, and as well as... And, um, you, I, I'm sure you're aware of the situation that we as Totri are in. Of course. And the, 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 the more, and it, it's, this is uh, on a more selfish front for us, but the more support that we can gather from everyone, the, the better. Yes, you, for, you. For our situation. I understand you want my support. Yes. Um, so, um, the thing is, if, uh, if you want my support, you have to earn it. So, if, if you can do something, something, you know, make him really squirm, and give a public apology course i'll put in a word for you and um as uh, uh, oh you want to make him squirm, squirm but just so we i mean a lot yeah yeah good okay so uh, that's that's the only that's the only two ways you would feel like you could use the, to resume not nothing uh, like no that. i'm i'm always open to negotiation if okay. he has things okay. if he has things of serious value he wants to give me i suppose i might i don't know Except a major boon or something. Major, major boon. I don't know. Mm. Pass that information on in quotes. <laughs> yeah, major boon. Uh, I without texting Velvet, I go like, it. It seems that Sally wants far more than the situation warrants. Ask her how willing will she be of having Isabel step in and help as a mediator. That's a text that I get back. I, yes. I will yeah. te text you back to say I don't think Rafe is go for anything that involves a massive amount of public groveling on behalf of the whole family. Me neither. <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> I haven't asked that him specifically. Like, and, yeah, 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 like, like just... public humiliation, <laughs> yeah. unlikely. The matter could be debatable according to the the keeper of the north, the 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 north gate. So yeah, what so do you... I think we should... I, I, I am I'm saying that it's like yeah. Yeah. The, 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 it could be because debatable according to the to the it's an issue of territory to the Northgate keeper um, and that issue anyway needs to be resolved because if it's not this will keep happening yeah so that's what I'm texting you okay. guys like convey whether if she would be happy of having Isabel step in because uh, the matter can be resolved okay Isabel I'm may be it. willing to step in as a mediator I've Isabel. just gotten you Why Isabel? That's the information I've gotten at the moment. I'm mm. trying to relay as much as I can. I don't really see that I need a negotiator. I mean, I'm, I'm in charge of this situation. It should be should be Rupert getting a negotiator. I think it, I think it, I, someone to negotiate well, how he's going to be buried. Not negotiator, just a mediator. So, I mean, if you want if you want Isabel to come, fine, but. I, I wanted think to it's make more a, for the venture to save face. I want her to make else. an effort. I want her to make a fuss of me. If she makes a fuss of me, then I'll then sure. And uh, I, 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 believe, I believe Finn might be willing to to come in as well if you would. I mean, they're my coterie. I talk to them all the time. Um, but fine. Look, you tell Finn and you tell Isabel. If they make a fuss, make an effort. Then I'll listen to this matter that I've already got completely under control. But if they want to get involved, if they want to have some of the fun, then they're going to have to make, you know, mm. make things sweet for me. Okay? <laughs> so when I get the results of their failure, <laughs> their failure <laughs> I say the four of us need a short audience, maybe 30 seconds to a minute with the Keeper of the North Gate. Yes, yep. agreed. So the current situation, just in terms of like mechanics and what's coming up, is that you have Rupert on side. You have Rupert very, very on side. You have Sally willing to listen, but not very, very on side. And that those two will sort of even out in okay, terms of the yeah. role that you have to make. 
So you're saying you wish to meet with the keeper of the North Gate? Yeah, but yes. it would be, uh, this, I think this would be part of a project, yes. part of the activities, yeah. we yeah. don't have to do a scene. Yeah. It would be asking what is the North Gate keeper's take on the line that divides the territory. Yeah. So we have some leverage against Sally or... Sure. So, so also, how can we help in that situation? Yeah. Well, it might be that because you're you're pulling your size into <laughs> this project that they might go and speak. I'm with not the, pulling mine yeah. into it. I know. I know yes. you're not. Yes. I know you're not. I'm talking to uh, yeah. okay. yeah. Theo and uh, Silas. All right. So this is going to be an ongoing thing because, of course, you can't persuade Sally on a single meeting, and of course, Rupert is not necessarily wanting to do what Sally wants him to do, and so there is a lot of back and forth. And this is going to kind of take time. I'm going to say this project is going to take about three weeks for okay. you to complete. And you are going to have to make a roll. The roll you're going to have to make is a difficulty four, four. roll. I have persuasion. You can, yes. Plus so my molar. Yes. I have. Do you have persuasion? I have persuasion. My only, only other background I could throw at this is resources, but I don't no, quite um, need to get applied. Is your persuasion, negotiation... Uh, yeah, do you have any specialties that you can throw in now? Okay. Uh, is your persuasion three or more? No. no. Uh, I have a one dot for persuasion, so oh, you can get, you get yeah. one dot And uh, I'm bringing Finn in. And he's bringing Finn as collateral. Yes. So that's an, a die? Two. Yeah. Oh, two. Yeah. Okay. I will also uh, I will also gamble my point. You're gambling so he's gambling. Point. We got a gambler. Okay. Woo! And you're so, gambling your point. Yes. Yeah. So that's two more dice. But I'm not giving you. I'm not adding anything to this. I'm not moment. Yes, so, because yeah. you're you're assisting in the persuasion. Yeah, fine. You're so, because you're involved in, the in all of the negotiation. Okay, yeah. You're and assisting you, in the persuasion. Oh god. Yeah. And you have brought wrong. and you have brought your yeah. sire's attention to the fact that you're doing this thing, and they are going to talk you up a bit. So for, for when you don't roll any dice yet, I haven't quite finished. I am. Are you Channeling the power of a thousand Buddhas. Don't are you throw them. are you gambling a point? Yes, I am. Also, I already added that. Back. And are you and are you gambling a point? No. We so, need at least one. Wait a minute. <laughs> there is something before you roll the dice. I wish to do. Whilst these negotiations are warming up, uh, Joanne, you will you will be um, how will this work? Yeah, um, Barnaby will come to see you. He says, I've got some bad news. He says, I've just looked out um, outside. He says, and um, I think Anne might have worked out where we are. Not exactly, but she's close. <laughs> just go and talk to her. Go and talk to her. Tell her I'm not here. Tell her, tell her I'm out of town. <laughs> <laughs> tell her I died. And whatever you do, don't tell her, don't tell her this address. Tell her, tell her some other address. Okay? Okay. Great. Great. Okay. Good luck. I'm not here. I'm not here. <laughs> are you are you doing what he said? Yeah. So you go down on your crutches. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and you Yeah, the horse inside. <laughs> and you you kind of I shuffle. Know. And she has Wallace, so that's what yeah. I'm to say. <laughs> um <laughs> So she is uh, not alone. She is um, with quite a beefy looking guy in a suit. Um, and she's walking alongside him. He looks very kind of po-faced. Um, and he's got a very, very like shaved, super short hair. Um, the kind of like neck that folds slightly over the collar of the thing. And he's, he like, he doesn't completely like burst the suit to the seams. It's obviously tailored, but he, he's a big guy. Um, and she is looking very tiny and petite next to him. Um, and there's a car parked in the street that looks far nicer than all the other cars here. And she's kind of looking around. And when you come out, she's, you hear her say, like her voice carries, she says, oh good, there she is. And then, then she says, can you hold my balloon? And she hands <laughs> this guy this like little heart balloon. Yeah. Um, and she'll come running over to you. And she'll say, oh, are you all right? You look like you're hurt. You saw what happened in court. Yes, but that was a long time ago. Yes. Oh, goodness, it must have been very bad. She looks around. Aren't we naughty, meeting out here in the street like this? 
fairly normal place to meet for most people. Not for me. Now, okay. I'm very glad I bumped into you because I wanted to talk to you. I did give him your, your letter, by the way. What did he say? Read it and it's not my, not my place to look at anything. It's between you two. No, but what did he say to you when he read it? He didn't say anything to me. Did he, did he make any noises? Did he, did he react? I don't know. I, as he read it and I was in a... Well, I was going to read it, but I went... I can't. Oh, it's, no, it's no, it's very him. private. No, exactly. no, I, no, it's because we're friends. We trust each other. That's important. Now, my daddy tells me that you are trying to do something very worthwhile. And I was wondering, even though, well, it's something of a coterie matter, if you might want some help. I was wondering if we might make a little arrangement. Depends on what the help is. And... Well, there's a little something I'd like from you. And if you could give that to me, I'd be willing to help, you know, make everything happen. Because, well, Rupert does almost anything I say. I can, I can make things very... I'm very persuasive. You've got him wrapped around your little finger? Yes, yes, exactly. So, so what do you say? It's a very small thing. It depends on what it is first. I'd like you to have, help me um, get into that hospital. The one I, I used to work at? Yes, yes, the one you have connections to. What for? Well, to help the city, of course. I have jobs to do as well, you know. We all have to work. And, you know, um, I like to... Well, I don't have to tell you why it is, because it's a deal. Will you let me in? I won't make a scene or a mess or anything. I'll be very discreet. I don't know what you're going to do, and I... The... Well, that's hardly that. It's just allowing me inside. I won't cause any trouble. That's all you need to know. And in return, I'll help you do this thing so that people will start treating you like a proper person. You can always sneak inside yourself. I, I haven't been I could, but I don't like sneaking. And neither do I. I like doors to open for me. So, are you going to open a door for me, and I'll help open a door for you into Oxfordshire? What do you say? I think it's a very good deal. It might be, but it's not something I can take up at this point. I'm sorry. Oh. Oh, how very disappointing. How very, very disappointing. Oh, my mood's been completely soured now. I don't know what I'll say to Daddy when I get home. Oh, well, you... Good good luck on those um, crutches getting back up those stairs. <laughs> she turns and starts Damn. to walk <laughs> Are you saying or doing yeah, anything? Give me some more times because that's a burn right there. <laughs> kind of just look at, look after like. Be thankful she didn't ask you to hook up yeah. a date between Barnaby and her. Yeah, just <laughs> get back upstairs somehow. <laughs> okay, so you make your way back upstairs. Um, and coming back to you, mm-hmm. Theodore. Um, so yeah, you can go ahead and roll. I don't know why you, you, you did a wrong. Why are you wrong? Because you mean to your dice. Quite exciting. I, I see four. four no, cuatro, say six successes, no crits. Oh! Just six successes. So the project is in play. Oh, this gosh. means over the next three weeks, you will be basically meeting with Sally, meeting with Rupert. You will be getting Isabel and Finn involved to, to yeah. talk. And you are gradually trying to, you know, get this deal to happen. Assuming that nobody else interferes with this project between now and, like, the end of it in three weeks' time, at the end of that three weeks, the project will complete and you will find out the results in course. Okay? So. (laughs) God, you just don't want to eat some kids. What the hell is going on? Let the kid in. If she makes a mess, it's on her. So, um, let us let us continue on. Uh, Is anyone else doing any other cunning actions they wish to tell me about before I start to progress the uh, timeline? I have other stuff to do, but it's like individual to me. So that's absolutely fine. If individual things are coming up, individual things are relevant. I'm going to be doing individual scenes as we go. Uh, I'll I'll, I'll be be trying to get. I've got two things I want to do. So if you let me know what they are, and then I'll just I'll kind of we'll we'll start bouncing around. I'll I'll, I'll go. I think currently I'll wait to get the information on Eric. 
Okay, so with getting information on Eric, how are you intending to do that? How is Silas going to get information on Eric? Um, I mean, it's going to be taught uh, use it using my persuasion and probably my little bit of fame to uh, go, go through the people that are known currently. Okay, just... as a question to you, are you employing any disciplines? Uh, I would certainly uh, employ all. Okay. Presence and hopefully the beautiful woman can. So, um, just as a note for Silas, so you're basically going to be going around kind of social acting circles trying to get information on yeah. Eric. So, the thing that will strike Silas, something that you've seen a couple of times when you've gone hunting with Finn, is there is this moment, in the same way that you can sometimes make the blood surge in your arms to be kind of stronger and your legs to be faster and things like that that you can also do this thing where you kind of stir the blood within you. And it's like, again, like turning it on when you're doing a performance, but somehow in a more profound manner. And that when you do this, the thing that will, you know, Silas is a big guy and often gets attention, but you, you move in circles filled with super attractive and famous people. And sometimes it can be hard to hold center stage. <coughs> but the thing that is quite enticing is that when you do this, everybody's attention you know, even if they're doing other things, they can't help but their eyes be drawn in your in your direction when you begin to have these conversations. So let's say um, I will allow you to, the, it, the difficulty would have been lower if you like if it was investigation, mm -hmm. but I'll let you run it off persuasion and charisma, uh, add your fame, add your so presence. Yes. Uh, and would my would my looks count as well? Yes, your looks will count. <laughs> so, uh, providing you're willing to be flirty and you know. Yeah, I think that's a given. Yeah. Uh, there was not even. Please don't ask me anything by being pretty. There was not even a flicker of resistance. No. Yeah. Uh, I'll just pimp yes. myself out for information. Uh, yeah. um, he already shook his ass in front of the <laughs> yeah. costume girl. He, he, yeah. <laughs> to be fair, that saved you making rolls. In yeah. student bars, so. <laughs> life. It's totally healing aggravated damage. Um, and this is, this is a roll with hunger, or yes. yeah, with hunger because it's you, yeah, yeah. Because um, obviously, messy criticals are hilarious in social situations. Yeah. <laughs> um, and finally, I just took one I'm good at with this character. Yeah. Oh, oh shit! My God. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, yes. You can you can yeah, always spend willpower. As the ST, I always endorse you spending your willpower at every opportunity. So you are in quite a fancy club filled yeah. with attractive Five. people. People who've been coming off kind of sets and and other shows tend to congregate. It's slightly exclusive, but you were able to get in. How many successes? Five. Okay. So five successes, yes, you will get some people to open up about Eric. There, the thing that will come up is that nothing ever, nothing ever has, you know, been kind of finalised about him. But apparently, um, you will get word that he's got a bit of a reputation, and um, it's not the first time that he. You know, several different people were mentioned. Yeah, that he's one of those people that you... He's very charming, but you don't let him get too close. There's a few horror stories. There's some story about someone who left a show he was on because he was on it. Because of something that happened, but it all got hushed up. Eric, though, is a bit of a rising star. He's got quite a lot of currency at the moment. So it's, you know, nothing really is being said about it. But it's one of those things that people seem to know. Mm. And the more women that you speak to the more that gets confirmed. However, nobody says, yeah, it was me. But you will get a name that comes up a couple of times. And the name is Janie Harris. Apparently, um, she isn't even in the business anymore. And it was something to do with him, that's what they say. Yeah. And I will pass that information on <coughs> to the, the one with the investigator and and Okay, so you're letting these two know. Great. And I'll come back to, to that bit a bit later. You said there was some things you wanted to do? Yes, actually, my priorities have changed from when I discussed them with you to now. So, wow. <laughs> so, I have, so things I do need to do. So tell me your next priority. So my next priority is to, um, to dump some of my resources into hiring a place in perpetuity under somebody else's name where I can be with Adam. 
That's the thing that I'm focusing Ooh. my attention on. Okay. Probably. That is... who, in the name of someone, I don't care if they die. Right? Okay. <laughs> so uh, awesome. probably, probably Norman or somebody like that. Yeah. Right? So, the, so, so um, the, the only issue here yeah. is um, making sure it's not traceable to you. Exactly, yeah. Uh, so I think that is probably going to be... Ooh. I think you could probably make a subterfuge argument. You can make a larceny argument. Yeah, it's definitely subterfuge. Uh, I would think something along those lines. Yep. So let's say, let's say manipulation and subterfuge. Um, and let me know if you have any other relevant abilities you wish to play in all of this. I don't think so. I'm not, I'm not um, I think this is a relatively simple thing for you to yep. achieve. Um, obviously, whilst it's being set up and paid for, yep. Well, how luxurious is this new home, or or like? It's not particularly because uh, I don't want to draw attention to it. Okay, fine. So it's, it's basically. So yeah. what I will say is, is that t for a little while it will tie up one of your resource yes, blocks. Yes, that's Okay. Fine. So if you if you make a roll, this is just to see how what the difficulty is for someone else. Should ever they investigate yes. this, who knows? But if they did, of course I tell no one about it. Of this. course, of yeah. course. <laughs> so. Ooh. That's a bit rubbish. That is a that is five now. successes, critical win, and you can re-roll all three black dice with a willpower. Five successes, yep. critical win is very solid. You're up. You can welcome to re-roll if you want. If you re-roll, you yep. you only risk increasing the number of successes. Yep. Well, I want to do that. So. Okay. <laughs> fine. Yeah. Fine. Yeah. 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 So I'll just. Uh... So let me just make a note. Oh, no, so six yeah. successes, critical win. But He's since she got a crit, nice. does like she it. still need to tie her resources? Since you got a crit. I like that response. Yeah, we'll say that for the crit win, you can you don't have to tie up your resources. Okay. You're you, you do some clever cash flow yes. shenanigans. I then, of course, I let him know about this so that we can come and go at our leisure. Well, yeah, okay. Well, so, the, leisure, yeah. so the place is secret. Obviously, you going there not being noticed yes. is the risk. But yeah. Yes, but no one knows it's tied to and you. Then we don't have to talk by, um, by message. Yes. Or I don't have to know when I'm meeting him, which yeah. can be taken out of my head. Yes. So Operation Secret Love Nest. Yes, done. Go. Excellent. I'm glad to have prioritised that. That will still take a little while to get <laughs> yes. fully set up. Yep. You, you, you are doing it. It is all going okay. peachy. Uh, Joanne. Two things I want to do. Yep. I one. Other things. What about going in at yeah, lunch? Okay. Well, go along so, by so one give by us, one. Give, us your, give yeah. us your next critical. Uh, helping thin bloods. Okay. And how do you intend to help thin bloods? Uh, use whatever information I've gathered from talking to Theo and all the others, and advising them to go to Sir Holder and basically say, we're yours, and like advise us and we will do it. Okay. That will be my advice to them. You have two options, mechanically speaking, here. Mm -hmm. You can literally assist the Thinbloods in their attempts to meet the criteria, mm -hmm. or you can have your own mini project where you spend your own resources <laughs> or effort. The, the, the advantage of the assist is it doesn't cost you anything. You will just give them a bonus to their thing. It's just a bit of your time. If you set up a project, you could potentially get the either a favor from the Thin Bloods for later or even them as a, an ally in the <coughs> future. Mm -hmm. Depends what Joanne wants from this. I can see Phil's about to jump Silas in as well. Silas will be willing to aid with that. I think I'm going to put in a point of resources to it. So you want to be able to do it as a project? So you are going to be doing it as a project. Okay, so are you two going to do it as a project? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll aid as a project. Okay, so for this project, the scope is one, because there are only two little thin bloods <laughs> um, that you're currently helping. So that the, means the, the difficulty resource, will be three. The resource is kind of a whatever they want you to do. Here is the money and resources to help you do it. So you it. are putting your literal money in this. So you're going like, to stake your resources on it. Yeah, so, like, so like if they say we need yeah. this help, That's this fine. monetary to do that, yeah. like we'll just go, okay, That's yes, fine. have this. So you're putting, you're putting your resources in. Yeah. What resources are you committing or are you just doing an assist? Um, uh, oh, I think I go for mainly for an assist. Okay. Yeah. So... At the moment, you have already committed your coterie point to a gamble and you don't know whether it's paid off yet or not, so you can't gamble on this. Also, these are thin bloods and no one cares. Yeah. So no one can gamble on it. So uh, one of the question is, um, what, so we need to the skill, the, the yeah. way you're trying to do it. Now, I don't think necessarily persuading them to take a course of action is a particularly big deal here. So I think it's more about 
I would say you could run this off etiquette because you're trying to get them to do the right thing, to come across in the right way. Two soldier, if either of you have etiquette, you can make that your... I do. So you could lead the role if you want. I, yeah. I have three in insight and one in subterfuge, and that's it for my social skills. Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to say that, well, why don't we say that Silas is going to lead this? He's yeah. going to try and coach them in the best way, because he's been coached in ways to approach senior vampires. Yeah. You're going to try and coach them in the best way to meet Sir Holder. You are staking your money to... Because obviously they don't have a lot of money. You're going to make sure they're properly attired, yeah. properly set up. What background are you bringing into this? You can uh, also put resources in if you want. I can, I can bring, my, bring my resources myself. Okay, yeah. so that is going to be, I believe, a total of three dice for your combined resources commitment. And your etiquette. I'm just putting one point of resource into this, not two. Well, uh, the you're going to have roll. The, you're, the, well, the roll. The minimum. Like if the roll is high, you oh, just actually, put one. Yeah, it depends what, how. But for every extra point of resources you put in, you won't lose the resources forever. It's just while the project's on, um, you get extra dice. So it's up to you. Still putting just one in. Just one. Yeah. So that's one from you. One from you is two. Your skill. Um, I don't. Are there any other advantages or things you think you could apply here? I'm going to argue probably not in your cases. No. Nope. Okay. Uh, I don't think my looks or my nope. points will allow. No. Nope. So you can make a roll if you want. The difficulty is three. You can't rouse, you can't willpower. Difficulty is three. Yeah. Scope one plus two is three. Well, how, how, what is that? That's your etiquette plus resources? That's yeah. etiquette. Because, yeah. Resources Unless plus you put resources. more resources into the pot. Etiquette, resources, and resources. So you that's your do. that's your call. But if, if you fail, the worst that can happen is you try again later at yeah. a higher difficulty. If you fail, then it gets harder to help them later. Yeah, that's it. Is it just one from uh, Joanne? Decision time, Joanne. How much do you care about these thin bloods? Put in one more. Oi! Ooh. Okay. Open up the cash book. <laughs> I, they did not completely fail. They just... One uh, success. Fine. So, it doesn't go disastrously for you. You don't offend Sir Holder in your efforts to or anything like that. However, your efforts are not making a grand amount of difference to to theirs, if you like. They will obviously get their own role, but this is not making it a slam dunk for them. Mm. If you wish to retry, it will be at plus one difficulty. Okay? So, uh, anything, Theodore? I'm trying to make sure that on the next court, I have a chance to talk to Sir William to invite him over. So you, you want to arrange the chance to speak to him in court? Yes. Okay. Because that, I, I... Yeah. He's so not going to eat with a fledgling. Okay. So I, I am And how are you to... going to do that? How are you going to make that happen? Um, how are you attempting to arrange the chance to speak to him? What's the, what's the avenue you're taking in? Oh, <clears throat> opportunistic during court. Oh, fine. Fine, fine, fine. It's going to be opportunistic. So let's come to court when court happens. Also, get, get stuff set up for my company in my free time, but I'm going to be really tied up for the, for the foreseeable future and the negotiations. So. so we'll come to the company later. Let's just skip forward a little bit. So let's go to Tuesday the 30th of... Uh, oh, oh. Do, do you add another thing? I don't know another thing. Or do we just leave those for now? No, we can, we can come back to them. I'm okay, just letting sorry, a few sorry. days okay, pass because yeah, yeah. we're currently like in time. Okay. You, you've done a lot of stuff. So Tuesday the 30th of October... In the evening, where is Theodore? Probably either setting up stuff with um, Rupert. Mm -hmm. Or? Um, not with Isabel because he's investing yeah. his yeah. mola. Uh, pro Miyuki. So with Miyuki, at Isabel's place or at, where, at your company? Uh, that you're trying to set up? Probably doing company work. Okay, so you are in your office. Mm -hmm doing some company work and uh, you hear something outside your office sounds like the clank of metal look at Miyuki she looks at you um, she will look over to a very specific drawer in a kind of I nod okay you begin taking off your Jacket in preparation. I mean, because I assume it's past 9 p.m. Oh, yeah, it's late. It's late. Um, I just not. You hear a. at the door. Mm. I nod to Miyuki so she stands behind it. Yeah. And they like my hat. She. Okay, yeah, she'll. No, no, like for her to. 
Yeah. And I just open the door, hiding. So you are ready for action. Yeah. You have weapon in hand. Yeah. Miyuki just, is moving have, to the door I'm, so that the door will she'll be hidden yeah. from sight. I will be grabbing the hilt. She's supposed to grab the Saya. Yeah. So if I need to do a Yai, she's there. Yeah. You are ready to draw. You pull open the door. With a smile. With a smile. Evening. So as you open the door, you stare into the battered chest plate of Sir Francis. <laughs> Sir Francis, it's a deep honour to have you here. Please, come in. So you're going to your desk, assumably, or back to Oh, your yes, desk. I, I immediately... So Miyuki just takes the blade and just hides <laughs> it and like around the back yeah. of the door as fast as she can. Um, and I just let her in. Okay. You Would hear... you like to have a seat? There's a, a longish pause, and she says no. But she will come in you hear the clank of the armor and the flail she looks exactly like you saw her in court um i show her the proper deference the scourge of the prince deserves okay and i i go around the the desk but i do not see it. okay so you stand i, I do yeah. not want her to like i don't i don't want to make this into a display of superiority okay your office seems smaller than usual now that she's here. Um, she doesn't look directly at you. She actually looks kind of out, out the window, although the, everything, the blinds are shut, but it's almost like she wants to look out of the window. You have the sense. Um, and she's only partly facing you. And she says, I've been thinking about about the way things are done. I imagine you feel great shame about what happened in court. I do, but that's because of my failing. Great shame indeed. I imagine that you feel the need to do something about this shame. I do. Yes, it is the most compelling thing. How far would you be willing to go to redeem yourself? That's a question I've been asking myself for the last few nights. I fully intend to find a way to redeem myself in the eyes of the prince and court. Now, Sir Holder, if you, if I may speak freely, I do not hold it against you. I've heard rumors and I have heard of the way you have been treated after the test was administered to me. Regardless of that, I see this as my failure. Rumors mean nothing. It is, it is all about what we hold. That is what the code is. The code is only as strong as those that hold it. I... What if I told you there might be a way to, to redeem yourself? I would be very willing to listen. There is... Uh... There is a kindred kindred she stops please let it not be a fury frenzy <laughs> she turns <It's> frenzy. <laughs> to look at Miyuki who of course the door is shut so she's yeah. she's not been able to leave without no, no. <laughs> Miyuki although your weapon is behind her back and not visible yeah. and she does like a yeah like a like a proper bow. This one. She is yours. She is. You may speak freely in front of her. She is. She looks back at Miyuki. You see one of her hands start to clench into a fist. 
and then unclench. She can stay. There is a kindred, a kindred outside of Oxfordshire, who displeases the prince. It is the prince's desire that this kindred is dealt with, that this kindred is slippery, and we do not know where they are. The prince would dearly like to know where they are. They have been speaking ill of Oxfordshire and have been causing stirring trouble. Stirring trouble. If Does this kindred need dealing with or just the whereabouts? We need to know where they are. They are hiding in secret. They are making plans. It is our desire that that those plans never reach fruition. But we cannot strike what we cannot find. And they are outside of Oxfordshire. Do you know do you have any idea of the whereabouts? They are a kindred of Reading. Reading. Yes. Hmm. Reading has been quiet of late. Too quiet. Things are strange there. The kindred is of Clan Malkavian. His name is Robert Weston. He is gathering allies. He is whispering slander about the prince to those in the tower. If you can find him, then come <coughs> to me again. Immediately. Sir Francis. And, and then perhaps, perhaps you will be able to look at yourself once more without shame. I will do this because it's for the better of Oxfordshire. Yes, 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 for the betterment of Oxfordshire. Yes. That's all the driver I need. Yes, it, it is all any of us need. She looks like she's about to go. Are you going to say anything else? Is there a way for me to contact you in case I need further information or give you any information I have gathered? <clears throat> Yes. The messenger will be able to find me. And then she turns. I noticed you appreciate the view. You're welcome to come and enjoy it any time you want. She kind of goes to the window suddenly and pulls back the... Uh, coverings. Can you just make an etiquette and wits for me? Ooh, you fucked be... up! You fucked up! <laughs> this is, this is uh, one of those roles that I'm going to fail again. Spectacularly. <clears throat> that's gone. One die. It's like, I don't even like these dice. I'm going to just launch them from the table. So that's cocked. Yeah, that's super cocked. So that's two successes. Okay, that's fine. In four dice, it's not bad, actually. She flings it open. You just step back so you're not in view of the, the window. And she stares for a moment. You're not quite sure at what. And then seems to nod to herself. And then just um, leaves. <coughs> Miyuki opens the door for her. Yeah. And does like a very polite... And uh, as Miyuki is closing the door, I'm already, like, you know, hands in pockets, facing out, window open, trying to figure out what was it that... Sir Francis was looking at. You spend some time looking out onto the night view of Oxfordshire, which is pretty, with the lights and the dark. At some point, like, if Miyuki comes, I just hold on to her or grab her hand or whatever, but just 
quietly looking out. It must have taken a lot of effort for her to come. So I'm pondering on that as well. And also I'm pondering as to how much of my company I can invest into finding this guy. Okay. You have a lot on your mind. You stare out the window, Miyuki at your side, as we bring that scene to a close. Um, right. Let me just do a couple of other scenes. So on Wednesday the 31st, um, Finn will contact you, Silas, and say, ask you to come down to yep. see him, which you will do. Yep. Um, and he'll say, uh, you've got a visitor. Yep. And he will say, I'll, uh, I'll leave you to it. Okay. And he will step out of the, the room, which of course is where you normally go. And uh, someone who came in into last session, who I don't think Silas has met yet, I'm trying to remember if he has, um, but is, uh, is Drew T. The messenger. The messenger. Uh, and she, just for, for reference, by the way, um, she's of Indian descent, because uh, I didn't make that clear last week. Uh, so she, yeah, she's there. She's quite a studious looking uh, woman. Um, she's wearing glasses and uh, quite sharply dressed, you will note. And she'll say, hello. Hello. And Silas. Um, I'm, I, I'm Druti. Uh, pleasure to meet you. I'm the messenger of the court. It's, it's my job to make sure that any wishes of those of the knights or the prince or uh, the herald are reached. Yeah. And so I've come to you on official business. Okay. And I should also <coughs> say that um, should you be successful in, in becoming recognised, uh, I will need a means to contact you. Do you, want, do you just want to take that now or...? That would be very helpful, if you don't mind. I will hand them another. It saves me having to bother yes. your sire. So are you are you giving her like a a, oh, a number or something? Give her a number. Yeah. She says it doesn't have to be now, but in the future also a place I can reach you on official business. I'm not allowed to phone it. I have to come and reach meet you in person. Okay. Although of course I can always arrange to to meet you. So uh, the reason I've come is that uh, I've had word for the Herald. He has a task for you, and he would like you to go to the following address. Yep. She will give you an address. Um, which is in Wigington, which she will tell you is in the north of Oxfordshire. And will then say, um, the gatekeeper has been informed that we will be travelling across uh, their territory tonight, so there won't be any problem with that. Tonight, okay. Oh yes, uh, you're to be there at midnight. Okay. Um, I'm afraid that was the totality of the message. Uh, and, uh, but, but I was assured that it will be something you will be adept at. Completing. Uh, is, is it, uh, as a, do I have to go alone, or, or is uh, that it... was the impression that I had? Okay. Yes, it was just a, it was especially for you. I'm told. Okay. Cool. So you are going, uh, assumably, to this place. Yes. All right. Uh, so essentially, the address when you get there looks to be a large field. <laughs> really remote it's like it seems there's no houses no not I mean you're, you're a little way even from the nearest village and the particular field that you're um, sorry I should say when you get to this field that's a bit odd you will find someone you don't immediately recognise him because he's not wearing his robes um, he's in fact wearing uh, just a quite a, a, a smart long coat like winter coat um, is the herald um, so assuming you park up, yep. he says, Ah, Mr. Shaw. Sir? Do follow me. Definitely. He says, I hope you don't mind getting a little muddy. Uh, I'm, I've got worse than muddy in my line, in my line of work. I don't doubt it. So you make your way across, like, across a field, across another, until you are quite far removed from the road in what looks, yeah, like a just a... What the thing that strikes you is, and some of the fields you're going through obviously have things planted and growing in them, but this one is perfectly <coughs> mown. There are a number of things you will see when you get to the field. Probably the most striking, well, there's a couple of people. One you don't recognise, but you will see standing distantly. Hard to make them out because the lighting is obviously very poor. Is um, what looks like a young woman um, 
and she's quite short. You guess, I mean, it's a guess because it's a distance to be in her early 20s. Um, she's wearing kind of outdoors, like waterproofs and welly boots. But even from this distance, and there is a little bit of light that she's carrying, um, there is something on her face that seems to reflect the light, maybe some metal or some glitter or something. Um, however, you don't pay a lot of attention to her because next to her is a large horse. <laughs> and on the horse is the man that I described last session who spoke to Sir Rafe, who looked like he'd stepped out of Mongol history, who's wearing the, like, the leather armour with the plates, yes. with the long moustache and everything else. Um, so he's sitting on a horse, and uh, the herald says, Silas, the man on the horse is Sir Gansuk of Clan Malkavian, and it is his desire to practice with the javelin. For <laughs> it has been some time since he has last worked on the art. And given your propensity for being so distracting and quick upon your feet, the prince deemed that you would be the perfect candidate for him to have that practice. For what use is a target that does not move? <laughs> <laughs> Well, that is karmic <laughs> payment for the doggo. <laughs> that is, yeah. No, that's yeah. That is get. succeeding at a cost. I see that, Mitch. I see that <laughs> smile. <laughs> I will be making my way to the top of the field. <coughs> Assuming that you are ready. What I would like you to do is to simply wave in our direction when we are prepared. And Sir Gansuk will begin his charge. He leans closer and he says... The right side of the field is muddier. The water collects there. You might wish to avoid that. Says, I do look forward to seeing your display. And then he makes his way up towards the top of the field. Okay. Now that he's mentioned it, you do notice that the knight on the horse, Sagansuk, does have on his saddle a number of javelins. Uh, I, I'll ask the help before you go. Um, what's that? Could you just uh, take care of my hat? Oh, it would be my pleasure. One must look after one's clothes in these situations. So he will take your hat and he will move up to the top of the field. Whatever happens, the hat is safe. Okay, that, that's, safe. that's good. That's, that's good. good. That's yep. a plus. That's a plus. The hat will survive. Yeah. Okay. The hat is on the Mitch right now. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> And now so, I, I can only see the hat over the <laughs> Is what is Silas doing? Uh so he's gonna do, do what he's told and... So you're gonna wave your Yep. And so dodge. when you when you wave your hand, Sagan Suk runs his hand along the, the horse's neck, and the horse raises its head, and a pair of red eyes glow out in the night in your direction. And Sagan Suk hefts the first javelin, raises it up. And calls out like, yeah! <laughs> and then spurs the horse into action. And you hear the thundering. And assumedly, yep. you are going to try and not be run through with javelin. Yep. So what follows is, is what, you know, is actually a horrific <laughs> bit of time. Some onlookers might find kind of hilarious in Benny Hill style. But for Silas, is you being borne down on by a massive red-eyed horse while a screaming man throws javelins at you relentlessly one after the other. So I would like you to make a dexterity and athletics check. You can Do you have rouse. a celerity? Uh, uh, can I add my stunt specialty? Can you add your stunt specialty? No, because this is not a stunt. This is absolutely real. He is throwing real javelins <laughs> with the intent to really run you through. Uh, yeah, if it's any consolation, I have already rolled his pull. That's no consolation. So I can tell you what the result. So when you've made your roll, we'll tell you. I'll tell you what the result will be. Come on, Silas. Deafness. Deafness. Celerity. Celerity. Use celerity to get away. Guess what? You don't have celerity. Exactly. I do. So you put on your best sprint. The thunder of hooves echoes behind you. The scream of the night echoes behind you, and you begin to weave and sprint as the javelins come and run you through. 
Mm. Willpower is yes, a good I thing. Will yeah. Willpower, yeah. just in case, because that has, has, has potential for real good. That uh, potential for real good. Yes! yes! Tell Could me we. what you got. Seven happy critical. Seven happy critical. I don't think it's going to be enough, to be honest, but... <laughs> means you made a good show. So the interesting thing is, many of the javelins do not get you. Fuck, however, fuck, fuck. however... It's probably, it's not the first one. It's, a, it's probably the third javelin that does catch you, not badly, and spurs you into an, an inspired kind of run for the rest of it. So you will take, a th let's see... Uh, in fact, you'll take three superficial just down to two. So two superficial in total. It's all you take from what could have been way worse. <coughs> and at the end of it, when you are done, you have a single graze along your side. And that is all. And you leave a crazy trail of javelins around you. Um, so Gansuk will ride up to you when... Um, when you are done and he leans down and he claps you once heartily on the shoulder and then rides off <laughs> and I will go and retrieve <laughs> so the herald will meet you and says well that was most impressive it seems you are good for your word Mr. Shaw Thank a you. good quality for those who wish to enter the city of Oxfordshire. I will bid you a good evening. And that ends that scene. So we are getting close to time. So let's just hear, um, I have a scene I would quite like to do, but let's just hear from um, you two about the other things you had on your agenda. So uh, I need to put some effort into investigating the stuff that he gave me. Certainly. Uh, mm -hmm. And then my other thing is a project for myself, which is the, the driver to get a, a specialisation in Oxford kindred politics. Awesome. And in your case? Uh, find out what Barnaby wants. For my thing. Ah. And Joanne will formally announce sidestepping from surgery into research. Okay. So I'm going to handle some of the smaller, like the, the sidestepping bit and the, uh, and the other bits. But actually, now that you've raised it... Let's do the um, you going to Barnaby. So you go to Barnaby, um, and well, how are you going to put it to him? I went to see when he just shows up in my flat one day. I mean, he shows up yeah. in your flat most nights. Yeah. <laughs> he goes out a lot, but he often does show up in your flat. I say, well, you said that. I could do something for you to gain an audience with the person I'm looking for. Yeah. Now I've got free time and I'm working towards other things. I think we can add that to the pile. I tell you what. How about... Because I, I don't need the thing right now. But how about if you've got some time, I, uh, I take you. Sounds good to me. Okay. Uh... Can you call a cab? Yes. <laughs> so, um, you call a cab. He will take you to a place in uh, southern Oxfordshire. Not a million miles away, actually, from where Sir Holder's place is, but not quite that far south. Um, in a, and it's a small village there. He will um, stop the, the cab a little way out. And he will take you to a house. Um, and he says, you've got a strong stomach, haven't you? I like to think so. He says, good. And he, he knocks on the door. And there's a pause. And then he says, I know you're there, just open the fucking door. And there's a pause, and then from the other side you hear Sally's voice. And she says, you didn't do the knock. He says, I can't remember the fucking knock. Just... A little bit of time passes, and eventually he does a knock. He goes, satisfied, and then the door opens. <laughs> um, 
So Sally's standing in the door. Uh, this hallway that you're standing in looks run down. The carpet is patchy. The wallpaper is peeling. It doesn't look like anyone actually lives here. It looks like an abandoned house. Although the other houses in this row don't look especially run down or awful. Um, and she says, is it time to Barnaby? And he says, yeah. Well, we wouldn't be here otherwise. And she says, I know. Come on. She gestures to you. And you start making your way inside. Yeah. He shuts the door behind you. You go to, the, you go kind of past the stairs and open a, a door inside of the stairs, which you have to kind of duck down to get past. And there is a, what looked like some rickety wooden steps that go down into some kind of basement or cellar. And um, you make your way down the steps. A smell comes up from the steps as you're making your way down. It smells of old blood, but enough that it still stirs the hunger a little bit. It also smells of musty air and rot and decay. And Sally says, look lively, you have a visitor. And in the darkness or from the darkness you hear And that's where we'll end the session. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> this is going to be awful. So thank you very much <laughs> for listening along. This obviously is, as we said earlier, there's going to be a mid-season break. So next week will not be... I don't even get to do this next week. No. <laughs> next week, you will be mortals. Well, yes. You three and Midge, and you will be a tech ghoul. Next week, I will be ruining everything. I'm very <laughs> sorry. Um, but don't yes. worry, we've bought fire extinguishers. They're on standby. But yes, so Carlos will be running a special... World of Darkness one shot set again also not in just the World of Darkness but also in the world of Blood on the Thames and Blood on the Thames Seas. Do join us then and then the following Monday we will be coming back for season one episode six of Blood on the Thames Seas. Thanks very much. Bye. Bye. I have to thank you for watching this episode of Blood on the Thames Seas. If you'd like to keep up with all the latest news please feel free to follow us on Twitter and Facebook. And remember if you want to join us live we were alive every Monday at 7pm on Twitch. Or, for those of you who can't be there, you can catch up on YouTube and with our podcast later. And I have to thank all of our supporters on Patreon and all of you lovely disaster ghouls. And I will see you next time.